order the Thursday, September 12, 2019 meeting of the Royal Oak Zoning Board of Appeals. <laughs> the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. If you would like to request that the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, which is not the case this evening, we do have a full board, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit their presentations to 10 minutes. Each participant in, the, in a public hearing shall do their best to limit their comments to three minutes which moves us along to our first item, which is the approval of the minutes for the August 8th, 2019 meeting. Uh, motion to approve. Support. Any additions, corrections, deletions? Not seeing any, I will call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Moving right along, do, do we have any old or unfinished business? So our first item of new business, item D1, case number F190905, public hearing on the appeal of Kimberly Sloan, petitioner and owner for the following variance, waive two feet of the maximum permitted four-foot fence site with a, within a front yard setback to permit construction of a six-foot-tall six privacy fence along the secondary front property line located at 2204 Star Road. Mr. Murphy. This site is located at the corner of Star and Linwood. Linwood, you can see from the aerial photograph on the screen in front of you, two different aerial photographs, that the property to the north has frontage along Linwood, has a front yard setback along uh, Linwood. Therefore, it's the subject property is required to have no structure uh, within the front yard setback along along Linwood and obviously you can tell based on that aerial photograph that the the petitioners existing house as well as garage is within that front yard setback that extends along Linwood and the petitioner is seeking the opportunity to put in a six foot tall vinyl fence that extends and I'll reference the sketch that they provided to us They're looking to install a six-foot vinyl fence that runs from the front of the home, essentially, to all the way to the rear property line adjacent to the neighbor on Linwood. And then the six-foot fence would run along their north property line as well. Again, all of that is within the front yard setback of the house to the north. And the best depiction of that is probably this photograph, which shows the perspective of the petitioner's house and garage from the from the vantage point of the property owner to the north. Again, they're looking to install a six-foot fence along the shared property line as well as a six-foot fence along the sidewalk along Linwood. Because the zoning ordinance requires that uh, requires a, a setback equivalent to the front yard of, uh, of the house on Linwood, this petitioner is not allowed to install a fence taller than four feet in the location where they've illustrated they want to install a six-foot fence. So they're seeking a waiver of two feet from that maximum height in order to accomplish installing the six-foot fence. Are there any questions for Mr. Murphy at this point? All right, I see the petitioners are present. Introduce yourselves, if you would, for the record, and tell us what you want to do. I am Kimberly Sloan. I own the property, and I want to put a privacy fence up to protect my dogs and my grandchildren being in my backyard, and that way nobody, my dogs can't see outside and have a fit because somebody's walking down the side of the house. You know, everybody's dog is going to protect their property and go crazy. Mine are no different. And then having my grandchildren in my backyard and not have to worry about people being able to see or take pictures, whatever. And I just feel it would be safer and it looked nice. You know, the fence that was there was done back in 63, 64. So I think I'm upgrading and doing something nice for the neighborhood besides doing something nice for my home to make it look better. And basically, I know exactly what the purpose of your restriction is, okay? But if you know, behind the house, when it runs along that front portion of the neighbor behind her, 
her driveway is on the other side of the house. So the six foot fence will not obstruct her view in any way, shape or form when she's coming out of her driveway. It has no effect on her. In fact, the garage is so close to the where the fence line will be that it's more of an obstruction than the fence would be, okay, if it were an obstruction at all, which it's not because her driveway is on the other side of her house. Secondly, what we plan to do is from that front portion of the house where the six foot ends, we plan to slope it down to a four foot and then again slope it down to a three foot so that she can see over the top of it, no problem, at a three foot height to be able to see the sidewalk and make sure that any pedestrians would be safe from backing out of her own driveway. But the purpose of doing that along that front portion, there's already a path that people are cutting across the lawn when they're walking across. That's why they had the chain link fence all the way down to the sidewalk to begin with, was because people would constantly cut across the front lawn. Nobody wants that, okay? It, it's destroying her front lawn, having people cut across it. And having that three foot high fence right up to the sidewalk would make that stop. They would have to go around it. And she's had to clean up a lot of mess that other dogs are leaving that the people aren't picking up either. Any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Uh, just one quick question. The drawings, I see two drawings here and they're a bit confusing. So you'll be three foot high south of the front face of the home? Correct. Is that, okay, and then you're proposing six feet high to the north. Right. Now, if you, yeah, but in the front of the house, it'll drop to four feet for maybe eight to 16 feet, and then it'll drop again to three feet for the remainder of that footage. So how far is the be, six foot? Let me drawing. see my drawing. I, I can't see the measurements from here up there. All right, you've got, there's 146 feet in total. <clears throat> so when you're coming off of the front of the house, there's there's 24 feet from the front of the house all the way to the sidewalk. It's 24 feet. So if we went, if we sloped down to four feet in the first eight feet, then we would stop and then we would do the rest in three foot high. It would slope down again to three foot high. You understand? Yeah. Show me what. So there would be, there would just three, be one eight foot three, section. Four. That would be six. sloping down to the four foot, and then it would be one section of four foot, and then it would slope again to the three foot, and the remainder would be three foot. So she would have at least 16 feet, which is much longer than a car length of three foot high. So she could see the proper, she could see the sidewalk, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The vinyl fence. Yes. Mr. Ofek? Um, you said one of the things is to help keep your dogs in. Are they getting out now with the chain link or? Oh, no. Okay. No, mm -hmm. not, not so, getting out. Just, no. just keeping, keeping them keeping calm from, from okay. people so that's Because I was going to say, I have, I'd have less of a problem with it being six foot high if it was more open. Unfortunately, with you starting to do all closed, you start to create sort of like this wall along that side. It, have you looked at other type fences to make it more open, say, above the four feet line? The only problem with that is if it's open, the dogs are going to be able to still be teased by the people outside and still see other dogs when they're being walked next to the fence, which is the problem she's having with the chain link there. The dogs see other people, you know, when they're out and they're just out there in their yard, of course it's their job to protect the yard. So when people are walking by with their dogs, they tend to go at the fence and, and bark, 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 bark the whole way of the fence. Well, if I would say a dog with good eyesight and hear, hearing, is, or good hearing and scent is more than eyesight, but... 
Yeah, but if kids kids like when they see the dogs out in the in the yard, they they take sticks and they rub it on on the fence to tease the dogs. Which I know. Isn't that right? I'm not sure that dogs are part of our hardship no. criteria up here, really. Well, the the grandchildren when they're out there playing, I don't think they are either. That's, that's a huge issue. They're, they're the grandkids aren't either because we're granting this to the property and the and the dogs and the kids are all going to move on and we're going to have this for a lifetime. So that's the decision we're making mm -hmm. up here. Okay. Well, she's got a letter from neighbors that would like to see the fence go up. Could you give a copy of that to Mr. Olfak and he'll pass it around for us to read? And I think I see Ms. Anderson's hand. I'm looking at the aerial schematic, and I could be wrong, uh, Joseph, but it looks like if they ended the six-foot fence at the – if they pulled it further to the south and they ended the garage, they could contain the dogs, and it would be almost in line with the house, the front of the house. Is that – you know what I'm saying? Well, if you if you want her to stop the six foot at the back of the house, and no, then at the back of the garage, drop down to four foot, and then drop down to three foot at the very front. Yeah, the the, the back of the house, when the, where the, when the dogs come out of the house, what's gonna? They're gonna be still in the gate is gonna go. Where the where the back of the house is right there? You see where that double gate is in the chain link? Well, Can you see that gate up against the house? As Mr. Cole mentioned, it's not about the dogs. It's about I it's about that. a fence. I understand that. But when you come down from here just to that point, we could go stop there instead of at the front of the house like was planned. We could stop there with the six foot and then drop to four and three. I'm totally confused now. Oh, Unless we're having a slow day or something. <laughs> From the back of my house on back is the six foot. Thank you. Right, That's all. To the front of the house. So and you have the, the from the back of my house all the, the way to the back of the property would be six foot. Right. So from right here, essentially right here, all the way to here would be the six foot high. And from here forward would be the shorter fence. So what and is the problem with the four foot it, fence? You that and pick what, it is, what is what is so your dogs aren't jumping over the fence now? You're having a, a closed fence. It's a mm -hmm. solid fence mm -hmm. versus the the mm -hmm. cyclone fence that you have now. That should right. alleviate some of your issues. Oh, but I wanted to go six foot to keep it more private in my own backyard. That's there's other ways to do that. You could do soft soft shrubs and things like that. You can put arborvitae. You can. But that kind of takes away from the nice vinyl privacy fence. Not necessarily. It can enhance it many times. It requires a lot more maintenance than a fence does, and since her husband is no longer alive to do that maintenance, it's kind of hard on her because she's got to work and then she has to take care of her grandkids. But, and again, I'm not seeing a hardship, but that's... Mr. Kroll. I, I couldn't help notice the few posts that are in and all the materials in the back of the house. That, did you try to pull a permit and then they informed you that... You couldn't do it this way, or how? Yes, what's they going told me on? I needed to come and do this. Where's the pictures of the houses that we found with fences exactly? Does anybody else have any questions for the petitioners at this doing? point? Hang on, we have more information for you. Okay. We have examples of fences that have been allowed to be installed that are even larger than hers. And in the same situation, it's corner lots, and the addresses of them are at the top. Well, we'll have two pages because it shows both sides. And, and most of these, as I'm going through them, there's a couple of them, but most of them look like they're on major roads. Your road, is it a major road or is it not a major road? No, I'm I'm in a subdivision. There's also side streets that it that it shows on those too. All right, well, those get passed around since we don't have any more questions. I'm going to ask you two to take a seat real quickly okay. so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this matter? All right, not seeing anybody. I will close the public hearing. Bring it back to this side of the table for any further discussion. If anybody has any. I don't know if I'm ready for a motion, but 
I, I have no problem with the fence that's going along their neighbor's side as well as the even back far fence that would run perpendicular to or almost perpendicular to Linwood. I just have a problem with all that fence because of how long their, their back lot is, that whole entire length being six foot. Like Miss Anderson said, I could go for to the back of the garage, maybe in the front of the garage, but going all the way to the house, that's, to me, that's just a big impediment that we're allowing to change the look of that neighborhood from who knows how long. When, just to add to that, when I said to the back of the garage, and I think you misconstrued, what I meant was pull that pole fence that would have been six feet on Linwood at the neighbors and pull it up, and just enclose a smaller portion of that rear yard up to the up to the garage because I think that the corner of the garage on the west side is in line with the front house front of the house on Linwood, so I don't think that it would be an issue. But as soon as you move the, see what I'm saying? Because the garage would then be part of a fence almost in a weird weird way. That's that's the way I was looking at it. I understand what you're getting at now. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just don't see a practical difficulty here. There's no difference between this lot and any other corner lot, and we're not here to change the ordinance, just to grant <coughs> exceptions when there's a practical difficulty that makes it different than the other corners, and this one's the same as any corner. And they're all subject to that ordinance. Well, so I, I before we get too much into either speaking for or against it, we should have a motion on the table. I will move to deny the variance request for the fence. Support. We have a motion and support. Did you want to follow up with any more comments, Ms. Zukin? No, I'm fine. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Curtis? I'm, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry that the dogs bark. Um, however, this is a corner lot that doesn't seem to have any significant difference from other corner lots, as, as we just heard. And um, I don't see the practical difference that we're trying to grant any relief to. So it's a corner lot. The ordinance is what it is. And I, I don't see any reason. A four-foot fence that could block view could probably help a lot for the children and dogs. But that doesn't need a variance. Yes, sir. I'm in agreement too. We've made exceptions in the past along major roads like Campbell. We have higher traffic volumes, but in this case, we don't. So I'm in agreement with uh, with uh, Ms. Zukin. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I too am in agreement and will be not in favor or will be in favor of the denial. Um, and again, we're we're here to grant practical difficulties, and there just isn't any. I mean, dogs, kids, all that is wonderful, but we, we don't really have the ability to judge that here. All right, any other comments? I agree. All right, then I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion to deny the request, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Sorry, ladies. Wow. Okay, so how much six-foot fence can she actually drop on any portion of the property at all? Mr. Murphy, you have an opportunity to talk to Kevin in the building division tomorrow. I know you probably worked with him to, to get the original correspondence on what would be allowed. We'll inform him of the board's decision and then he can instruct you under the ordinance requirements what you would be able to get a permit for. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, that moves us along to... Moving along, item D2, case number 190932, public hearing on the appeal of Parent Avenue Properties LLC petitioner and owner for the following variances. A, wave three of the maximum allowable 12 dwelling units. B, wave 10 feet of the maximum allowable height of 30 foot to permit construction of a four-story 15-unit multiple family dwelling building located at 127 through 207 West Parent Avenue. Mr. Murphy. This site should look familiar. Back in July, the board did deny a variance request related to the construction of a four-story building with 18 dwelling units. The petitioner has modified their concept, and we feel it's substantially different in order to justify being able to come back for new variance requests in front of you t today. Uh, previously, the number they were proposing the number of dwelling units at 18. They've reduced that to uh, 15 units. The 
upper floor contains uh, three units that had a greater number of units before. Uh, the footprint of the building is, is site slightly smaller. You'll see in the, on the site plan that the building is now set back 10 feet off of the public alley. And that allows for a, uh, for a wider two-way traffic along the alley as well as a greater turning radius to get in and out of the structure uh, the, which has parking on the lower level. The site does provide two parking spaces per unit as required by the by the zoning ordinance. The site the structure does remain 30 feet in height. I will point out the the difference in elevation and cut from the concept before that was in front of you. The petitioner can describe precisely how they modified the drawing based on some of the comments that you and the neighbors had provided uh, last time in July. But the building is is stepped back or has a tiered effect not only on the front elevation which is the frontage along but it also has a tiered effect along the public alley you'll see I'll zoom into to the west elevation <coughs> As I had noted, there, there is a public alley behind the structure, and that's, that's noted along with the, the building being set back 10 feet off of, uh, of the alley, and then the building starts with the parking on the ground floor, uh, steps up to get to the common terrace area for, for some of the units, and then further is tiered uh, as it gets to 40 feet at its at the third floor. Previously, the building had been closer to the public alley, and the fourth floor along the rear of the structure was not, did not have a tiered effect. It was not stepped back. And the petitioner has modified that. They're still seeking the height variance. However, again, difference in the elevation and the floor plan for that fourth level in comparison to what you saw back in July. So the petitioner is here today seeking that height variance as well as a variance for three to waive three of the maximum allowable 12 dwelling units based on the ordinance requirements of for the lot of its size. And with that, the petitioner is here to describe um, their efforts. And I do have uh, the video that you had provided, so I can bring that up if you like. Before I call the petitioners up, any questions for Mr. Murphy? All right, not seeing any, please. Good evening, John Rosic, architect for the project. And I'm also here with Jason Prescorn, the um, developer, along with Susan Lambrick, um, her, the co-developer. Um, as noted by Mr. Murphy, we did take in consideration all of the recommendations. Uh, and uh, as I stated in the last meeting, uh, I thought they were all very good. So uh, to restate some of the, uh, the changes that we did make, we did um, increase the alley from 18 feet to 20 feet. And we did increase the setback. Um, to from zero to 10 feet. As noted also in the drawings, we plan on improving the total portion of the alley behind the building. So uh, when we have the video, um, we'll run that, we'll see it. Uh, we do believe that um, the tap back to the rear and tap back to the front will decrease the amount of impact uh, substantially. I think that that will be shown in the renderings and the video. Um, we have, as I said, a part of the original amenity feature of the site was that we do have two parking places for each unit, and we do have totally enclosed parking. So none of the parking will be exposed, which I think is an amenity feature for the, uh, for the neighborhood. You see that we've provided substantial landscaping, which again, I believe is a amenity feature for the neighborhood. We uh, are providing a um, some uh, bioswale, which was part of the condition of the um, Planning Commission approval. And we are doing a green roof um, as a part of that, um, that, that uh, approval. So we feel that we've provided what I, we think is an amenity um, development in the, in the community. And we feel that this particular development will be a um, benchmark for other developments because we think we've actually beat out the look of everything else in town. But that's just our little, you know, I mean, it's a competitive market, and we believe that in order to be um, uh, the better mousetrap, we have to provide a better opportunity and feature. So with that, um, if Mr. Murphy, if you could provide some of the video or the, 
renderings, we do have fixed renderings as well. We weren't quite sure of the capacity of your, um, yeah. so that's why it's, it's jagged. You want to describe the uh, Okay, the what we're doing, this is the front of the building. This is on Perrin Avenue. You see the setback. You see a green ridge across the top. And you can see that the impact of the fourth floor is minimal. We had a material change as well, which also minimizes what we feel is the impact of the, of the, uh, of the fourth floor. We have um, precast stone. Uh, we have brick which is a high quality, again, finished feature. There's no siding whatsoever. To the rear, again, you see we've, we've recessed the building back, uh, the required 10 feet, and we've um, established a, a, a 20 foot alley as opposed to the eight, existing 18 foot alley. This is a drive down Parent Avenue. Again, so you see the impact of the setback. Actually, we think it's a much better looking building anyway, okay, based upon what we had provided before. So we're actually much happier about the, the, um, the, the solution. Again, take note of the fact that the impact of the, of the fourth story is minimal to nil, and this is as a car is driving by. Substantial landscaping, as you um, can see. all a part of what's required by the planning department and has to be Im implemented as a part of the planning department approval, or excuse me, the planning board approval. Again, it's usually a little smoother. <laughs> we're not staggering to the alley, we're, we're, we're driving. Mr. Murphy's fault. <clears throat> and we did a low resolution, so I guess I'm glad we didn't give you the high resolution. So, <laughs> but again, the big thing here is that we really we feel we made a substantial improvement to the alley. Okay, I mean, if you look at the alley now, it's very um, foreboding. Okay, foreboding, however you want to call it, and uh, we we feel we've actually created two fronts. Okay, when we look at how we finished it, now. Again, what we're trying to impact to you tonight is that we have uh, taken into consideration in a feel a responsible way to your recommendations, and we believe that we are providing a very significant amenity feature of development as a uh, benchmark for other developments in the area. Right. I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Any questions for the petitioners at this point? One question. Yes, ma'am. Are the Compared to the, the heights of the houses across the street, is the 30 feet comparable? Because uh, the, uh, the first three, I guess I'm asking, are the three, first three layers, are they comparable? Within the roof line of the other homes in the neighborhood, yes. Right, and then you get the, uh, I'm guessing that each floor is 10 feet, is that how? Yes. Okay, so then the top that's uh, step back is another 10 feet. And then also, on either side of that is, I know there's one parking lot on one. Is there also another parking lot on the other? I'm trying to remember. Yes, uh, the Presley uh, site owns the parking lot. And there, is, there is a home in that parking lot as well, but it's okay. mostly parking with Only just saying, one Only saying, because those are the sides that you can see everything, and so that's why I was... Yes, there's a rather large parking lot that um, the okay. Presley site owns. Okay. The Presley site, the, the house on the Presley site is owned by the, um, the property owners of the Presley property as well and it's a rental and as I stated we talk with other people they're they're they'll probably be intending to develop that parcel at some point in time mr. Curtis yeah did I understand you have site approval pending this variant these two variances being granted is that what I understand absolutely yeah. we we had a robust site approval uh -huh. um, from that um, uh, meeting and, and Ms. Anderson's question was the same question I had. It's the fourth story that needs that variance. Yes. Uh, but I would just say I thought you did a great job mit mitigating that impact. It looks great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. So the, the alley behind goes east and west, which is behind the building. Then it kind of there's kind of an L shape where then the alley goes north out to 
parent. Is that, is that you know, correct? No, I'm not quite sure. I, I think the alley might end. At, this way towards Maine. Yeah. But if you're going west, then you have to turn north to get towards parent. The See, whole it, thing. It ends. The, the, the alley behind the building ends at that alley that's adjacent to our proposed development. Okay. But so how uh, so a car to get into this would come off of parent, turn south down the the alley, um, and then tur turn now uh, that'd be east again to get into the garage. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, like the entries are here and here. So you either have the opportunity to drive this way or the opportunity to drive this way. So actually, on, on Washington. Yeah. So no, 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 that's, that's the Washington. alley. That's a public alley. Yeah, but I don't okay, think that street is to the, okay. north, right to the south. But the, you have, there's a parent. You have the opportunity to access and egress from parent or access and egress. Through. And you took 10 feet someplace to make the alley bigger. You say the requirement for the setback in this area is 10 feet. Okay. So we did in this particular case implement the 10 feet requirement. So that's not a part of our various. Variance required, but in addition to that, that existing alley is 18 feet. Okay. And so and that's the one that goes north and south. The one that goes east west. East west is north uh, is 18 feet, and there was brought up concern of the the, the ability for the traffic, traffic. to negotiate yeah. sir, in and out. Sir, can I ask you to hop back on the microphone so we can everybody can hear you better? Sure. Thank you. Not loud now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so. Again, to, to restate the answer to your question, the alley is existing now 18 feet. We have now made the alley 20 feet. Again, as I stated, we're going to make complete improvements based upon DPW requirements. We've set the building back 10 feet, which is a requirement for this particular zoning. And we've got two drive entrances, which are 20 feet wide, so that the access, e egress and access to those areas will have full um, maneuverability, we feel, for the project. All right, any other questions? All right, not seeing any, I'm going to ask you gentlemen to take a seat so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this matter? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Tom Brady. I uh, own Jim Brady's, which is right next door to those guys. Uh, good evening. Um, my thoughts is that this is a, a, a great step forward. I mean, if it, you know, we're talking about the alley. The alley that they're talking about dead ends at my, my garbage dock which between me and the Main Street, uh, Main Street right. flooring guys, we've got, a, you know, we've got a, a, a lease with the city where we're able to use that for our businesses. So the, the alley does not go right to Maine. To Maine. The alley in its current state, has anybody been there recently? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably one of the worst walks in Royal Oak, in my opinion. I mean, the, the, the concrete's all torn up. The, the, the landscape's completely overgrown. Um, it, this is a huge, if you're just, I mean, just from the alley standpoint, a major step forward. I mean, that's not an easy alley to traverse right now as it is. I think that this would, it would be a, a major upgrade just, just from an alley standpoint in terms of cars being able to actually travel on that and go <laughs> back and forth. And, um, you know, I mean, and th these are great guys. I mean, I've, I've met them and, 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 you know, and I think I was here in the, uh, not in the zoning, I was here when they originally had the, the approval minus the, the zoning board improvements. And, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, when we talk about the neighborhood, in my opinion, the neighborhood is five houses across the street. I mean, what is happening in the city of Royal Oak right now? I mean, if you go across Main Street on Parent, it's these type of developments all the way down, right? So you've got, you know, you've got a small part of the south end of Main Street just north of us, which is, which way is it going to go? Which way is the city going to go? You know, I mean, if you go to Washington and go across the streets where Chet's Rental was, what's that turning into? When you go to Chin's Jewelry, what's happening there? I mean, I think these guys have done an amazing job of listening to what, what, the, what the board wants. I think this, this rendition looks incredible. I love the roof setback. I mean, I think it looks, it looks beautiful. Um, and and I, just one point, and I don't know what the current situation is, but I know my partner, when we originally uh, bought the property from uh, Bobby Higgins back in 15, the gentleman or the, the group that owns the three homes that he ended up buying, he had approached my partner about buying them. And my partner did a walkthrough in the homes, and they weren't single-family units. I mean, these things were broken up, and there was like six, seven people living in a home. So, I mean, in terms of density, I don't, I mean, I don't know what they are right now, but it's not just like one, home, one or two people are living in this house. I mean, there was, he walked through there, he said, I mean, it was, that was cut up into so many bedrooms, I've never seen anything like it. I don't know if that's what it is right now. But in terms of the, you know, the, the, the direction that Royal Oak is going, you know, I mean, how many years ago did they extend the DDA right down Main Street to attract these kind of developments? 
right? You've got a wonderful development going on right on 696 now, the Singh development, the Griffin. Obviously, the, the, the developments that were done prior to that, just north of that, I mean, this fits right in, you know, in terms of the direction, in my opinion, as a, as a local business owner, pay taxes, you know, love to be here. Um, I, I think that this is a, from the alley to the, you know, to, to the front, to the, just the way that these guys have approached it. In my opinion, it's, it's, a, it's a great addition to parent, and uh, I, would, I would hope you guys could find your way to grant those variances. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is John Bonar. Um, we live at 206 West Kenilworth. Uh, we're the first house uh, right directly behind the new project that's being proposed. And uh, I had written a letter that I submitted to the board. I, uh, I submitted it on Tuesday. I don't know if everybody got it. Uh, but, the last page of the packet. But I would just like to uh, reference that letter in my comments concerning this development. My wife and I were present at the July meeting when the initial variances were, th were sought. We made our concerns known relating to the density and height variances and also a safety issue concerning the alley access as the members of the board. We see from the new proposal that the alley would be increased to 20 feet and the density reduced from 18 units to 15 units and that there have been some added setbacks in the structure. Our concerns remain with the proposed density of three additional units and the continuing height of 40 feet. We believe that the petitioner has not presented any proof that adhering to the existing code of a maximum height of 30 feet and the maximum density of 12 units would, and I quote, result in peculiar or exceptional practical difficulties to or exceptional undue hardship upon the owner of such property. We don't see any restriction of use of the property or the denial of hardship by denying the requested variances. According to the zoning ordinance, which was stated at the beginning that you didn't write, I didn't write, non-use variances, for non-use variances, the applicant must present evidence to show that if this chapter is applied strictly, practical difficulties will result to the applicant and that all four of the following requirements are met. A, that this chapter's restrictions unreasonably pre prevent the owner from using the property for a permitted purpose. The owner is not prevented from building a three-story, 30-foot structure with 12 units on the property. That the variance would do substantial justice to the applicant as well as to other property owners in the district, and a lesser relaxation than that requested would not give substantial relief to the owner of the property would be more consistent with justice to other property owners. These variants would not do substantial justice to other property owners. We would be looking at a 40-foot building in our backyard, and we do not see what substantial relief the variance provides to the owner of the property other than the ability to add an additional story, which is 10 feet, and three units, which constitutes a financial gain for the owner and not a hardship. See that the plight of the landowner is due to the unique circumstances of the property. There are no unique circumstances of the property that requires an additional 10 feet or three units. And lastly, D, that the alleged hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. The alleged hardship that has been created is by the owner in his desire to add the additional height and units for financial reason. Since none of those four requirements we believe have been met, we believe the board has a duty to deny the variances requested. We understand that development is inevitable, but our concern is that the building of these multifamily units, especially in the neighborhoods, be restricted to the parameters that the zoning board has in place for the good of the city and the citizens of Royal Oak. And I thank you for your consideration. And just uh, a couple other... Well, sir, actually, I need you... I've, I've given you an extra minute while you read the letter back to us. Okay. So if you could just wrap up real quickly, I'd appreciate it. I, I would only state that the... Uh, I don't see any hardship that's, that's being presented here to, uh, to be able to grant the variances other than the fact that they need the, the, the fourth story in order to make it financially feasible. 
And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And who's next? Anybody? Cool. <clears throat> I live at 122 West Parent, directly across from the project. I've lived there for 58 years, and I won't be supporting this, this project. Uh, the 40-foot variance, like the, the man on Kenilworth, he's looking at 40 feet in his backyard. I'm looking at it in the front yard. I mean, we do have the projects. Everything's inevitable, but the, the density, right now we have permit parking on the street, you know, from Diamond Gyms. And we get all sorts of, you know, kickback on that, approaching in our driveways, and that's inevitable. We can't control it. Um, um, but it's just like, um, now we got the condos on Washington. We got the condos on Maine. So now, I mean, the, the front, there's your privacy, that's gone. East side of the house, backyard, that's gonna be gone when that happens. So I just can't, I just am not supporting this. Um, and one other thing, uh, at your last meeting, there was a couple of statements made about um, the neighborhood being a cesspool for trouble and all this, and that the neighbors don't care. Uh, those two statements are totally, you know, false and uh, disrespectful. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody. I will close the public <laughs> hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. And if you want to come back up in case we have any uh, questions for... for for your team. Mr. Ofak? I did one because he did bring up all the hardships that you haven't addressed. Do you have anything to address regarding what hardships you have? Because um, I sort of agree that the... Good response. That's about the performance we did based on 12 units. That makes sense. Well, again, I stated this last time. And the gentleman who came up recently stated his case last time as well, some, in a very similar way. So nothing much has changed on that level. Uh, again, we're trying to do a quality development in the city of Royal Oak. I mean, the, everything I'm going to be saying has nothing to do with the uh, hardship. So I'll just state it just for the fact is that uh, in order to make this project financially feasible, we have to um, uh, have the uh, additional units. And we've compromised um, with three as opposed to six. So that's our as our statement, plain and simple. I mean, we're not going to try to tell you something different. Anybody else? Mr. Clapp. I mean, I understand the concerns about the height and the density. And last month, I was not in agreement either. But I do feel that the applicant made good strides this month, and I commend you on that. You listened to what we said a few months back, and you came back with a plan that does make more sense. You stepped the buildings back, and in all cases, you lessened the impact. So we have reduced number of units. You provided even more parking that's required. We increased the rear yard setback, and we increased the width of the public alley. So, so for that, I will make a more motion to approve the two variances in front of us. Do we have a motion? I will uh, second that. And we have a second. Mr. Clay, anything else you want to add? No, that's Mr. it. Mr. Kroll? I, I second it as opposed to supported it because I'm really not sure where I'm going with this yet, but I, I, I think it's uh, we need to get it on the table and, and get some discussion going. Um, I, too, am, uh, think it's beautiful architecture. I, I appreciate that you listened to us at the, at the July meeting. Um, however, I, I still have the problem with the hardships because, um, you know, it's uh, uh, unfortunate there really aren't any. I, I think um, a couple thoughts. One, I worry a little bit about the precedent that, that you talked about of finding three houses in a row and, and being able to put up a large structure. Um, what we do here molds, is going to mold Royal Oak for a long time, I think, in both planning and zoning. Um, we have that responsibility. So um, I think this is somewhat precedent setting, and I worry about that. On, on the other hand, um, you know, the, the, the the national gurus are saying 1,000, 1,500 new residents in Royal Oak in the next five years, and we don't have room for one. So I have a feeling we're going to be seeing more and more of this sort of, um, this sort of offering. On, on a positive side, I think if we're going to allow this anywhere, um, that district has pretty much already been, uh, this, this isn't the first project um, in the area. And, and uh, 
Mr. Brady mentioned the Griffin, which is going up, and that's going to have a major impact. So um, uh, I guess all in all, as I keep talking, I, I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be in uh, approval of this. Well, I mean, I'll add a couple of thoughts because I mean, the the thought that you mentioned in terms of the precedent that we're setting here that that's, that's the thing that's been weighing on my mind more than anything else. And actually, I drove by this property yet again this morning, and and I think the thing that is ha really has me sold on this happening in this location is the fact that it is being tucked between a current parking lot for Brady's location and a public alley. If it wasn't being nestled in such a way that it really wasn't sort of standalone between an alley and a parking lot where you were impacting the middle of other houses and so on and so forth, I think the location could be problematic. I think the fact that you were able to find that location and work it out that way I think is very uh, positive. So I'll be in support of this motion as well. Mr. Olfak. Oh, Ms. Anderson, I'm sorry. So my concerns are pretty much what the residents around there have. I think the building is phenomenal looking. I mean, it is beautiful. And, and I commend you on going back to the drawing board. And I commend you on the fact that you came up with a better design than you had the first time. Um, however, the city has given you 100% density grant already. But now you still want a little bit more. And that troubles me because I think if you went back to your drawing board yet again, you might come up with something that we all could live with and the neighbors could live with. And I'm, and I'm really concerned about the density growing and growing and growing little by little by little. We don't even have a lot of the, the community built up yet. And I think we're going to run into, in the future, some problems with this density. Those are, those are my concerns, and um, I guess because of those, I won't be supporting it, even though I think it's a beautiful, stunning project. Well, hold on, let me... Uh, okay, all right. Are there any comments, other comments from the board at this point? Ms. Ukin? Well, I, I do agree with what uh, Ms. Anderson said. I, I love the way you redesigned it. I somewhat doubt that the neighbors in front and back will see the fourth story. But I, I am torn because there's nobody official has increased the density provisions of the ordinance. And I don't see why we should, because we think the neighborhood's changing. Um, the planning commission, the city commission might eventually go a different direction. I doubt it. But without a hardship, I don't see how we can grant this variance. Yes, ma'am. I agree 100%. The building is beautiful. I think this will sell. I think it will be a really great thing. But I don't see the hardship, and I think that's where the problem lies, that it's not – there's no hardship here on this. And it's the fact that it says you can have it this big but not that big. So I can't say that we should say it's okay for this but not okay for somebody else. You have to have that hardship. Mr. Olfak. Going through the hardships, um, I'm torn because I think there's actually a couple of them that they do have. Uh, one of it is, I agree, it's in a transition right now, that whole area, and eventually planning may change the zoning on that to allow for this. Right, that's what needs to go up. So in my ways, that's sort of a hardship, but one of their own doing right now because it's, it's not there yet. This would probably be the push to actually change it. Um, I do think their proposal would substantially do justice to the area, make it look a lot better, uh, and not be too overpowering with the setbacks. In fact, I'm very appreciative of the setbacks. I'm very appreciative of the, the sustainability features of the green roofs uh, and the bioswale in there. Um, unfortunately, I think this is their own doing, and uh, 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 they could still use this lot. Granted, it might not be financially vi visible to them to still get the 12 that, that they have been granted. So I'm, I'm sort of torn because in my eyes, they're sort of 50-50 in the hardships in my eye. I think the only comment I would make to sort of follow up on that is, I don't know if anybody watched the meeting when they approved this project. The, the mayor and the mayor pro tem are both very uh, much on board with this project, you know, two elected officials who drive policy in the city. So I always sort of look to... You know, what are our leaders doing? And when the mayor's on board and the mayor pro tem is on board with the project, that always carries a little bit of weight with me. 
Yeah, I find, I, I'd add that I found your discussion very persuasive, the idea that it's not just any three houses in a row. It's three houses in a row in this location between a parking lot and a public alley, and quite frankly, that one house across that public alley is going to be developed very soon, I'm sure, as well. So I will be in support of the granting of these variances. I think it's a tremendous project, and uh, I look forward to seeing that happen. Right. Any other discussion? Then I will go ahead and call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion to approve, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I'll be no. Okay. no. Can I have a show of hands for the notion so Mr. Murphy could can, can track them? Oh, Mr. Hart's tracking them? Oh. <laughs> motion carries. Right. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. That's yeah, going to be gorgeous. Thank you. All right, moving right along, item D3, case number 190933, public hearing on the appeal of Mike Dobbenmeyer, uh, Fortune Wireless Petitioner and AT&T owner for the following variances, A, wave 193.9 feet of the minimum required 250-foot setback from a public right-of-way, that being East 4th Street, and B, wave 30 feet of the minimum required 250-foot setback from a residential zone district to permit construction of a 250-foot wireless communication support structure within an off-street parking lot located at 421 South William. Mr. Murphy. This site occupies essentially a whole city block, and it's uh, most closely right around the corner from here <coughs> at the northeast corner of Williams and 5th has a four-story building on the site and two surface parking lots. The petitioner is proposing to erect a 250-foot tall wireless communication support structure, or a cell tower, as most commonly known as, in the parking lot on the north side of the property. And the support structure would be situated within a 40 by 50 enclosed, enclosed area with an associated generator and uh, equipment cabinets. It'll replace the current wireless uh, communication facility that's located directly behind this building, and it's referenced on that aerial photograph in front of you, front of you to show that uh, the one that's directly behind this building will be uh, removed in our F the city's efforts to create a, a municipal park on this property once the new city hall and the new police building are constructed, and the proposed tower would uh, replace uh, essentially what is what is currently here. The tower does measure 250 feet in height and you can see the design on the elevation on the screen in, in front of you. It's 250 feet tall. Uh, we do, under the zoning ordinance, require that the structure maintain a setback from the nearest property line equal to the height of the structure. And I'm going to reference a particular page in the petitioner's extensive report to the board to illustrate where it's located on the property and where that nearest public right-of-way is. The, uh, based on its proposed location, it's about 56 feet from, from the closest public right-of-way or East 4th Street. So they're seeking a variance, again, from that. Setback distance equal to the height. Uh, we based it on that closest distance because that is the closest public right away. So that's how we had structured the variance request. You'll see on the aerial photograph the distance from uh, from the uh, other four adjacent public right aways along Troy Williams and Sixth. The zoning ordinance does require that any structure also be the equal distance from any adjacent one family residential area. And the petitioner did an excellent job on this particular aerial photograph to show that at the nearest point to from the structure itself to a property zone one family residential is 220 square feet. And it's referencing what is a, essentially a gravel parking area behind the VFW hall, south of the VFW hall. 
that that property, although it's not used as a, a single family home, it's actually zoned one family residential. So that's the closest property that's zoned one family residential. The closest one family residential zoning district with a single family home on it is also illustrated in that is at 284 feet, which is certainly in excess of the height of the structure at 250, uh, 250 feet in the height. The planning, two days ago, the planning commission did did grant special land use approval. They did, however, postpone or table the site plan. They had quite an extensive conversation amongst themselves and with the petitioner about the uh, screening options and essentially design of the screening of the site itself as well as the, at the base of the proposed tower to screen the cabinet equipment as well as the generator. So the Planning Commission did grant special land use approval under the zoning ordinance requirements the petitioner must first receive special land use approval in order to seek a variance request. They were given that special land use approval, so they're here today. However, they are going back next month to the Planning Commission to have some refinement to the site plan in terms of, again, screening. Uh, not necessarily the placement of the tower on the site, but the screening of the site at the perimeter of the site, potentially, as well as at the base of the proposed tower that I can answer any questions and I think that the petitioner can provide a lot of clarification on the relationship as well the fact that it is a privately owned tower yet it will have essentially a lease with the county for their emergency management system and again it's replacing a tower that already exists right behind this building and so Mr. Clatt and Mr. Olfak. Uh, Mr. Murphy can you just clarify the setback requirement I assume it's for fall protection of the fall radius but can you clarify the requirement for the setback Yes, the tower needs to be set back from any adjacent single family property, uh, one family residential zoning district, so contained mostly single family homes, or equal to its height. And t t towers or structures vary in different heights, as well as the structure needs to be set back from any adjacent public right of way or property line, uh, equal to the height of the structure itself. So that is a typically a historic standard, yes, related to, uh, related to a, a pure drop um, on, a, on a right angle. Uh, there are, as the petitioner can, can describe, they're all, all designed now under federal guidelines to actually collapse amongst themselves at different segments. Uh, the petitioner did describe and provided a graphic to the Planning Commission that illustrates that a tower of this design, if it's designed to collapse amongst itself, it actually collapses within a 20-foot radius of its base mm -hmm. in, in, in circumstances. So it's not going to, it's designed structurally not so that it just timber and it falls over all at once like a tree that you cut at the bottom. It's designed to collapse in different segments among, amongst itself. Uh, there's some, also some examples of, of being set back off the property for just the impact on adjacent properties sure. as well especially the public rights away. But historically, it's associated with older designs, uh, structural designs of towers that did not collapse amongst them, upon themselves. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to guess, since this is trying to replace the existing tower, uh, trying to locate this tower to meet these requirements in this area is pretty much non-existent. Yeah, the petitioner uh, can, can okay. describe the other sites that they did look at in conjunction with the county to provide the best coverage for, um, for the county's emergency management system and uh, all the different options that they looked at and why they chose this particular site versus another. Uh, we did, when we were going through the Civic Center redevelopment, look at an option of placing it behind where the police building is currently being constructed. There's a what used to be a house for a Haven, if anyone recalls, an older home, and kind of nondescript. And, and that was a, a set-aside point initially for the tower. And we all thought that's right next to that single-family neighborhood. And is that really the best choice physically for being the most impactful f to an adjacent single-family neighborhood? Now, obviously, no matter where you pa plant, uh, <coughs> place a tower, it's going to be impactful to anyone. But uh, the petitioner can describe why they've chosen this particular location, how far they're all along on that process, and how detailed that process is. 
Mr. Curtis. I just I think I heard you say that planning has not given them final approval, so whatever happens here tonight, they have to go back to planning? Okay. They certainly do. And when, when would that be? Next month in October. So, yeah, this second Tuesday or whatever yes, it is. Correct. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. So, Mr. Murphy, did you say that the, close, the closest actual single-family residence is 284 feet? Correct. Correct. And that's at the corner of uh, 5th and Troy Street. All right. Not too many else. Is the petitioner present? Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Dobbenmeyer. I'm here on behalf of at and We also have Patricia Coates, and she's with the county. Um, just to reiterate what uh, Mr. Murphy has discussed, this is actually property owned by AT&T. Uh, AT&T will construct the tower uh, not only for their own use, but the county, uh, which also operates the emergency communications for the city as well along with, I believe, a couple other communities which Patricia can get into if needed. Um, also, in this general area, because the tower comes down, uh, not only for the county but for AT&T, we have to find a new site somewhere within this general area to get our coverage that our customers have enjoyed and to have the county's emergency communications uh, continue on. Um, and really, as said on by this board, there's nowhere we can go. We're, we're seeking a variance no matter what uh, with the setbacks within this general area. Um, I do have a letter from a structural engineer. It was discussed a little bit, which basically says the tower will be designed with that 20-foot radius. And what, what that is is essentially will buckle at certain points if it were to fail. Um, and when I say if it were to fail, in the unlikely event that it will fail. Uh, is very uncommon. Um, hurricanes, tornadoes, they can't even take these down. Uh, they are designed structurally, very capable of handling the worst of the worst. Uh, but again, in the unlikely event that it does fail, it will collapse within a 20-foot radius, and that is essentially an at and parking lot. So it won't have an impact on any of the neighboring properties or the right-of-ways. I do have that letter here, and directly behind the letter is an aerial view with the radius um, identified on the map, so you guys have a visual of what that radius is. Um, and then I go ahead and let Patricia take over. She can kind of describe why we need that 250-foot tower, uh, because at and is only going to be at 150. The county, city, they need the 250. That's why we're building the 250. And take it away. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm Patricia Coates. I'm Oakland County's 911 and communications coordinator with an association called CLEMIS under the county's IT department. That stands for Court and Law Enforcement Management Information Systems. It is a consortium of all the public safety agencies in Oakland County, police, <coughs> fire, and public EMS. And they came to the county back in 1999 and said, you know, we all have separate radio systems. I'm on UHF, my neighbor's on VHF, somebody else is on 800 megahertz. We can't talk to each other. Plus, we have the expense of maintaining all these individual systems. So they asked the county to develop a county-wide public safety communication system for all of police, fire, and public EMS. We did that. And I was before this body in 2003 and 2004 when we were building the tower that exists today because we needed a variance for that one. Obviously, it's very close to the streets. It also did not have the advantages of a tower today with the collapsing within a small radius. So actually the new tower will be much safer for the community. Um, what we did back then was the county offered every municipality ownership of the tower if we built it on municipal land. Royal Oak took advantage of that. The county deeded over the tower to Royal Oak. They have enjoyed having AT&T lease and pay rent on it to them for 15 years. And now it's time, obviously, to move it. So AT&T, our public safety partner, has agreed to build a tower taller than the weight, what they need because it's what public safety needs. 
Your police, fire, and EMS in the city have enjoyed exceptional coverage in the downtown area because the tower's in the downtown area. Coverage on a public safety radio system is really, it's a lot of factors, but three primary ones, location, height, and power of the transmitter and the receive antennas. Because we're so close to Canada and there's an international treaty, we can't do anything about power. The Federal Communications Commission limits us on power. All we can control is location and height. So AT&T doesn't need the 250 feet, Royal Oak Police and Fire do, so that you can continue to enjoy in-building coverage with small, less powered, portable radios. Mm -hmm. So that when you have a police officer in a house on a domestic, or you have a EMS in a, in a high rise trying to talk to the hospital from the side of a patient, or you have firemen inside a building trying to fight a fire, those portables work while they're inside the building. Out-of-door coverage is very easy to achieve. But to have in-building coverage, the site needs to be in downtown, and it needs to be at 250 feet. So we are fortunate that AT&T has agreed to do that. The county will now reverse. Instead of AT&T paying lease, lease uh, fees, the county will be paying lease fees, and Royal Oak will not have any expense for that. So we will be paying that for your public safety. Obviously, the tower, because it is a large consortium, also helps coverage in some of your adjacent cities, such as Ferndale, Hazel Park, and Madison Heights, which is important for interoperability. If we have a chase or we have a lot of fire departments coming together, everybody needs to be able to talk, which was the whole point of the system in the first place. So because A&T has found the land and is willing to build the tower, your public safety will continue to enjoy the coverage they have today. Yes, ma'am. So AT&T is footing the bill, correct? Will the county have exclusivity of everything above 150 feet? Meaning, I guess I'm wondering, you know, if it gets to the point where all of a sudden ATT wants to start putting all the chink, 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 all, you know how people put the different, I don't know what they're called. Discs I up there. I don't know Whatever. if you're building it for additional co-locators or not. I'm not sure what the lease says. Unfortunately, I didn't work for it or work on the lease. Um, but 18 will be at 150. The county will be at the top of the tower. If we can structurally handle additional antennas for other carriers such as Verizon or T-Mobile and they are interested in co-locating on the tower, uh, we would certainly entertain that. Um, wireless coverage is essential now to all communities. Over 50% of Americans don't have home phones. Uh, when people are buying homes now, it's just as important to see do their cell phones work. So a downtown wireless service, not only for AT&T, but other carriers, is extremely important. Um, whether or not they actually come on and go locate, I can't tell you that. Uh, but I can say if they did, I would probably be certain that AT&T would allow them to do it. They would, of course, have to go through zoning. I'm sure there's something in the city zoning code that uh, monitors co-locations and things like that. Um, but it would limit it would limit the number of towers. One tower could be large enough for everybody. Well, that's why I wasn't sure. So I wanted to ask you that because I didn't know if maybe at some point the county, since you're only leasing it, would be pushed out. No. And then no. you'd have to find someplace else. No. And they, you, they, you have don't get... they have a lease, and that, that's going to be for... A... Perpetuity. There you go. I mean, <laughs> so as long as they need it in that space... It's theirs. We cannot come in and kick them out. I'm sure all of the fine print has been worked out with people that make way more money than us. And <laughs> the attorneys have taken care of that. <laughs> um, keep in mind, the current tower does have space on it for another co-locator, such as Verizon or T-Mobile. And in 15 years, no one else except AT&T has asked to be on that tower. That's not to say it couldn't happen. Okay. I'll add that under federal regulations, local municipalities across the entire country, if they meet certain co-location standards, for instance, this particular tower, if other providers wanted to have their discs, as you say. Yeah, there, I don't know what the discs. Uh, and they meet, meet co-location definition requirements, which means there's an existing structure and they're simply adding uh, to it. Uh, they're not building another separate structure. Where all local municipalities across the entire country have to approve their paperwork to do so within a very short time frame. There's extraordinarily stringent federal regulations. Okay. 
No, I saw Ms. Zukin first, then Mr. Curtis. Um, do either of you know, is the current tower 250 feet? It is. I, I heard, I think, Ms. Coates, you said it needs to be in the downtown area. Correct. Can you help me understand what you mean by the downtown area in that sentence? Um, radio propagation also depends on the density of the buildings. It is very easy to get built, coverage into a, a stick-built residential home as opposed to the type of buildings you have downtown. So it's important that it be here because this is where your most dense buildings are. I do have a, a map that will show you what it would look like if there was no tower here, if that would be helpful. Actually, my question was, you use the word it needs to be here. Yes. And my question is, what do you mean when you use the word here? Where is here that here it needs is to be? Here is downtown Royal Oak. Um, okay, but but I the, understand with, we have we are, a big We are downtown. about a block from the existing tower, uh -huh. which means the coverage will re relatively remain unchanged. So if it were a block or two within the existing tower, right. then you're happy with that. I am. Because it's like a block from our main street in yes. our downtown. So. A block in another direction right. might not be a problem for no, coverage. No, the, the, the important thing is that it's where the large buildings are ah. because that's what you need to penetrate with the radio signal. Any other questions? All right, not seeing any, I'm going to ask you folks to take a seat so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this matter? Mr. Razor? Thank you, Chairman Esprit. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for serving the community on our zoning board. Uh, it's really appreciated. I did it for four years. I thought it was really enriching. Because I am the landowner, uh, my address 201 East 4th, Razor Law. Um, I'd like a little bit of latitude on time. I am the closest landowner. What to say about this, except it cannot happen. This is an enormous structure a block and a half away from the middle of your downtown. I want to tell you how big it is. The pad is 40 by 50, meaning that the pad would not fit in the room this way. And the structure is at least 30 by 30, meaning that the legs of those thing, of that thing, are wider than from this wall to that wall. And it goes up over 18 stories high. It's taller than the fifth. And the proposal from a private landowner is that it go on their land in prime downtown real estate in the central business district, a district which has a purpose which is completely contrary to enormous utility poles. If Razor Law came to you and said, we want to put this in our parking lot because we want to collect rent, I would hope that you would all throw your laptops at me because it would never happen. The only fact that makes this under consideration whatsoever is because it has a municipal use. And we're all concerned about the police. I love Corey. I love our men and women in uniform. Um, and the fact is, is this can be located in a place for the municipality that doesn't require a zoning variance. Because the city owns an eight by eight block area, which will allow a 250 foot radius for this tower at the new Civic Center. And so you won't need a variance. And I don't think, and Mr. Murphy, I appreciate, part of this is you don't want a big tower crashing down. Part of this is, is you don't want a person 50 feet away from this looking and seeing it all the way there. It's about scale. When you look at this and it's 250 feet away, it doesn't appear so monstrous. When you're on top of this 40 feet away on the sidewalk right here, this thing is enormous. Just to give you some sense of scale, my building is 60 by 60 on the first floor. This thing is three quarters of the size of the building. My investment will be seriously at risk by putting this in our downtown. It means this piece of land will never be developed to a higher and best use. It means this piece of land will always have a huge industrial utility thing on it. And the fact is, is that the petitioner cannot meet any of the four standards. There is zero hardship by this petitioner, AT&T. AT&T tells you they don't even need this tower. They're building it for the city. So the petitioner, AT&T, has zero hardship. What's the hardship? It's not the highest and best use. 
It's not a hardship. There's nothing about the quality of the land that makes it tough. It is not something that should be a block and a half from 4th of May. However, I'll tell you, while sitting here today, and I had an interesting conversation today with uh, uh, Robert Jones, who's the civic uh, coordinator of AT&T. Um, I'm pretty sure if you ask AT&T, they'll build this in our municipal complex. They don't really care. They want to have control over it. We'd have to negotiate a lease with them. And it occurred to me that we're really missing the boat on this thing. This thing should go on the southeast corner of the farmer's market, and it should have a great big RO up at the top of it. And it should say something like Civic Center or something else on it, and it should be a placemaker for our downtown Civic Plaza. That way, it's got a use and a purpose, and it's cool. Otherwise, you're letting this, this enormous industrial thing destroy a prime block of real estate. And here's the other thing. I hate to say this, I like AT&T, but that lot across the street from my firm has been neglected in an eyesore as long as I can remember. So I don't think they come to you with the cleanest of hands in terms of keeping their property up and making it look great. This is not a disguised tower. This is a galvanized, enormous, huge thing, the base of which would not even fit in this room. The other thing is... Mr. Reyes, I need you to try and wrap up. I'll give you the two extra minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Esri. I appreciate it. Planning hasn't even decided on site plan. It could turn out that uh, I know that uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Casada was very concerned about the placement of it. He really wanted to see it more tucked in the corner of the AT&T building. Well, if it moves, anything you do tonight doesn't matter. It would have to come back. You're granting very specific variances if you grant them for very sp specific dimensionality. If the site plan changes that, then they got to come back in front of you anyway. And they have to go back in front of planning to get this thing going. So what's the rush? I mean, I will personally tell you. Mr. Razor, I do need you to wrap up. Thank you very much. And I know you've given me some latitude. But i got to tell you, I have invested my heart and soul in this community for 25 years. I've invested a fortune in that historic and cool building at, at 201 East 4th. This thing will tank my property values and everybody else's property values for four blocks. When I was a zoning board member, there were a couple of decisions I regretted making. Please don't make this one of those decisions that years from now you'll say and look at that thing and say, we shouldn't have done that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Uh, why don't you folks come, come back up to the microphone and... Can I just... Yeah, I mean, you heard a number of things that if you want to address them, please feel free to do so. The tower is not 40 by 50. The compound is 40 by 50, meaning the fence. Um, as far as the tower itself, that is going to be a three-legged tower. The foundation of each leg is, I believe, six to eight feet. So we're not looking at a structure that is 40 by 50, as Mr. Razor had um, said there during his speech. And as far as not having a hardship, I would disagree. at and is losing their site in which they have exceptional LTE indoor coverage to this community for a number of years because the tower is coming down. And according to the FCC, when we have a license, we have to fulfill that license. If we don't fulfill that license by providing exceptional coverage uh, to a certain standard, they lose that license. They lose that frequency. So anywhere we go in this general area, which is where we need to be along with the county, we're going to need a variance. Uh, the police chief was here Tuesday. He had said it's not, they can't do it at a number of different locations, and I do apologize. I cannot uh, reiterate what those are. Um, but he did stress that this is really the, the best option uh, for them, so it's also the best option for us. It works for all parties involved. There's nowhere on this property we can go to meet the setbacks. Um, the property, the way the setback is, we cannot enjoy the use of that property. It is a permitted use with a special use approval, which we have received. Um, 
And as far as property values uh, being detrimental to property values, I've seen no evidence of that or presented outside of Mr. Razor's ward. In fact, I would say that having good communications, not only cell phone, but emergency communications, is an exceptional benefit to the community and raises property values. Uh, there are studies done. In fact, I wish I had the article. Um, there's a couple of them that I saw on a real estate website where they say that when people come in, look at homes, they no longer are asking school districts, houses, schools, things like that. The number one they're doing, thing they're doing is they are walking around from room to room and checking to see if their cell phones work. And that's an unbiased third party, has nothing to do with cell phone use. It's a real estate company that writes this. It, it's happening. And emergency communications is essential. And I would argue that we do have a hardship. And I would also argue that we're not going, that there's a tower a block away. It's a block away. Have property values diminished since that tower's been up? I'm curious. It's a block away. We're replacing a tower. I don't see how this is going to impact the properties when the tower here hasn't. I know you dis discussed this in quite some detail the other night, but just for the edification of this body, can you explain, and again, because I'm not in that line of work, I don't build towers, so I'm, I don't know, A, why it can't be affixed, let's say, to the current AT&T building, just for argument's sake, or B, why it can't be built at the new, new municipal complex, say, behind where the police station will be located? As from what, my, from what I remember, uh, the police chief saying is that the space behind the, the new police station, uh, it would essentially eliminate most of their parking. That was my understanding of what he was saying um, during his statements. Not only that, there was a number of homes very close. So you're going to have a n larger impact on residential structures, homes, things like that than you would here. And then, and then the roof part also, please. Um, we're at 150 feet. That roof's 70 feet. If we absolutely had to, perhaps. But that doesn't help us. We're at 150 feet now, or 160 feet. Mm -hmm. We're going to lose service All right. if we drop down to 70 feet. Um, so much so that it's so important to AT&T that we're willing to s split the bill and spend it all the money. We're, we're willing to go back. We're looking at our site plan. We've already been in discussions on what we're going to do. Um, and we'll be providing what we feel the Planning Commission is going to feel comfortable with as far as beautifying that, that parking lot area for the community. Mr. Curtis. Yeah, do you know how big the base is? Not how big individual yes. stanchions are, not, not individual foot well, there's footings, only, but how big is the base of this structure? So you'll have three separate legs, okay. and each foundation is, and I believe, and I'm six, six to, to eight, eight feet, feet right. is, is generally. But the general area that that covers up, how much? I would say 64 square feet, maybe. And, and that's, that's, that's a guess, because you have to think, too, you're going to have at and T's equipment in there, and this is a 40 by 50 <clears> foot compound. The county's going to have equipment in there, and then there's going to be sufficient space for additional carriers down the road if it ever got to that point. So it's not completely taking up 40 by 50, the tower itself. No, no, I understand that. But I also heard you say that it was your understanding that the police chief's concern about was losing most of their parking or uh, whatever your phrase right. was. So those two thoughts are hard for me to reconcile. It's either not very big in terms of its footprint or it's big enough to take away most of the parking. It can't be both. If he, a, what, he's not, saying not 40 a. by 50. Uh, I'm sorry, I hadn't finished my sentence. Sorry, sir. Yeah, thank you. If A, then not not A. It's called a excluded middle in logic, right? So I'm trying to understand from you, who represents the petitioner, how big is this thing? You said it's 64 square feet, so eight by eight? You know, honestly, I, I don't feel comfortable giving you a straight answer because I eight, don't know the exact amount. Yeah, but what I will eight say. It wouldn't take up a lot of the police chief's parking. That's why I'm trying you, to get a, a feel of that. If you look at a comparable compound size, mm -hmm. okay, so if, say, the police chief, they decide or were able to put a compound with that tower that would be able to accommodate their equipment and AT, AT T's equipment, I was told whatever that size is is chewing up their parking. One of the planning commission members was actually the one to make that statement, I believe. Um, for AT&T, it is not. 
uh, what I'm saying is he was saying the structure, he made it seem like the structure itself was 40 by 50. That is not oh, okay. the case. No, and that I is the you. only thing I'm, I'm arguing. Okay, yeah, thank you. We actually, and before I get to you, there's actually a rendering in there if you keep. Which one are you looking at? That's the one I'm looking at. I'm not at. sure which page I'm at, but it actually huh. shows you the setback from the existing building to the center of where the tower would be located. If you just sort of extrapolate that setback and sort yeah. of flip it sideways to the yeah. size of the tower, you get a pretty good feel for how big that triangular base will be. Yeah. Ms. Anderson? So you, you're familiar with the one. If we all took a walk downstairs and looked at the one on the side of this building, is it just like that one? I believe that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you may know better than me, I don't, I don't think it's got, it has the three legs on, on that, the one here, correct? No. This, the one we put up, it does have three sides. It was called a tripole, but it doesn't angle the way this tower does. It, it's straight down, which is also why if it were to fall, it doesn't fold in on itself. Mm -hmm. So this is the design you would want in an area like this. The one we put in is is a smaller footprint. We also had a lot less land to work mm -hmm. with there. As you'll, If you've been out there, the county shelter with our equipment is on the bottom. AT&T had to put theirs on top of ours because there wasn't room for a second shelter. Mm -hmm. And obviously, with public safety, we have to have a generator as well because this needs to be on 7 by 24 for our police and fire. So mm -hmm. um, the one we have here is slightly different, but it does have three sides. Yes, sir. Um, I was just wondering, because I know you have to go back to the Planning Commission, is there any likelihood that the location of the tower will move? Which no. would then okay. um, Actually, looking at the photos when I got back uh, to the office, there are two doors on that part of the building, um, along with drainage, and it, it would also, there's another entrance way from one of the other streets. So if you move the tower in the corner there, you're blocking doors to the building, you're take, having to take up drainage, and then you're also blocking what appeared to be another entrance exit for the property. Okay. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to, to do that to the, the property itself. This is in an area where uh, it, it's more out of the way on the property. Okay. I just want to make sure because it would affect the variance, some of the variances. Right. And I would, and I would say if, if for some reason we had it, it happened, so be it. I mean, we'll come back and pay you guys another visit. I wouldn't want to hold up a decision the planning commission already approved the special use where that tower currently is located as shown on the site plan and i believe that the main concern uh is mostly potential landscaping fence replacement uh things like that yes, is there just we're talking about the size of this tower is there another tower around here that's similar to what this is proposed the tower right here but i mean, I mean it, that one's got the skinny yes but it, no, it's no, the same with height. the fence you're not gonna see you're not going to see the base of the tower. So the answer is no, there's nothing similar to this tower that you're planning to I, build. I can't tell there. you whether or not there okay. is or isn't, um, but as far as visual, from what you would see standing on the road, poking up above a fence, this tower is very similar. Yes, ma'am. Did you consider the other side of your building? You have a small parking lot there? Uh, I, I can't answer that, ma'am. I was not involved. Uh, up until on the, I guess we decide to file for zoning. Back side. Um, on, I think it, it's on Troy Street. I did look at the photos. It does appear to be very tight, and I think it would actually put us much closer to the street. <coughs> There's like a parking lot across from it, so that's why I was wondering. Sort of on the other side of Troy. Well, is anybody prepared to offer a motion at this point? I have a question for sure. for staff on procedure. Yeah, so this has to go back to planning whatever we do tonight for final. Uh, we have a meeting scheduled two days after that meeting. Are we able to motion a tabling of this to see what happens in the next few weeks? Because they're not going to start working on this tomorrow because they don't have final approval. Anyone's, any board members capable of making that motion if you feel it's uh, appropriate? I would like to make a motion that we table this to the next I'd like meeting. to support that motion. Yeah. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, before you go into your points, I just want to ask these folks, what kind of hardship does that create for you if we make you come back next month after you get final site plan approval from 
personally, <laughs> I said, let's push this meeting back to October because I had a feeling this would happen. So it, it's not going to impact us. It's two days later. We would obviously prefer to have a decision one way or another uh, tonight. It's always the preference, but any time a board recommends we push it back, rule of thumb is allow it. The county also has no particular rush as long as that tower stays up. Yeah. It was our understanding that the city wanted that down as soon as possible. And we do have some FCC licensing, et cetera, we have to do to move equipment from that tower to the new one once it's constructed. But there is no rush on the county. 48 part. hours from the next plan commission meeting to our next Correct. meeting isn't going to. No. Mr. Curtis. Yeah, well, that, my thought is, uh, one, of course we need a proper tower in our downtown area for public safety. And thank you for the county for consolidating all that. Some that sounded like 20 years ago. That was a good move. I'm happy that happened. And I certainly want to see uh, the best possible public safety for our city and our county and our neighbors, neighboring counties. Um, but since it's not going to go, you know, nobody's putting a shovel in the ground tomorrow. Uh, this is really a 48 hours, you know, wait, because it's going to wait 28 days. Why not wait 30 days um, to make sure that we have the best plan in front of us? That's my concern. So that's why I put the motion on the table. Mr. Kroll. I, I'd like to put it back for many of the same reasons, Mr. Curtis. Um, however, I, you guys have a lot of I don't knows here tonight. And, and I'd like to know some things. Um, I want to know how big this thing is. I, I want to see it. Well, what are we voting on here? I, I really knew more, I think, coming in than I'm, I'm leaving with. And um, it seems like you ought to be able to tell us how big this thing is. I, I think Mr. Razor has realistic concerns. His building is, has a huge investment sitting across the street from it. So I haven't got any idea what this thing's going to look like. And, and I couldn't possibly vote yes if, in fact, and, and I, too, think there's a better location, or, or at least uh, I'd like to see more locations talked about. But uh, come back after planning. Um, please give us a little more description of what this thing looks like. I, I, I don't think there's anybody anywhere that's an argument that the city, the police, the fire need this tower. Um, then it becomes, where, where do we put it? You know, what's, what's the best place to put it? So. That's what I would hope you guys would come back with. And, and I will mention that um, back in 2000, whenever it was, a long time ago, I was on the board then, and we've got to ask them, well, why can't you put it here? Why can't you put it here? And, and back then, they had all the reasoning, and, and I haven't really heard, you know, when we ask you, well, what about, why couldn't you put it over in, in a different area, except for the fact you need it around the buildings, but we're getting more and more buildings all the time, so I don't think that's big problem right there right and now. I was on that board as well, and as I recall, it came very close to failing, to not passing. And it passed because of a safety issue, and that's probably the same, probably the realistic reason we should pass it again. Yes. And we're, we're, I don't think as a board we want to be in the way of this, but just want it to make sense. Mr. Curtis. Nor do I want to say anything other than thank you for AT&T footing this bill. <laughs> I didn't mean to be too hostile towards that. Uh, but at the same time, the two days to make sure we know what we're talking about doesn't feel like too much. I would feel more comfortable. And a lot of these points were actually discussed on Tuesday night. Unfortunately, the chief wasn't able to make it this evening. Hmm. But maybe staff can put a bug in his ear that he can be here next month to address some of those concerns. We'll let him know. I will, if the, if the motion on the table does pass, I'll just remind everyone that the, it's a postponed or tabled case. The public hearing was held and right. opened and closed, and public comment was solicited, so there will not be notice uh, again no, no, because no, it's correct. just a postponed or tabled item. And no additional fees to the petition. Correct. Yes. All right. If there are no other comments, I will call for a vote to table this item until next month. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? See you in 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> we switching roles here? Right. Sorry. Time run out, I guess. Welcome. Hello. Let me know when you are ready. Sandwich wasn't enough. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, someone's up. Okay.
Okay, so let's move ahead. along to item D4, which is case number 190934, public hearing on the appeal of Daniel and Gail Meissner, petitioner and owner for the following variance. Waive the requirement that off-street parking be located in the side or rear yard to permit construction of a driveway parking pad within the front yard of a single-family dwelling located at 116 South Laurel. Okay, so the variance request before you, um, as stated, is for 116 South Laurel. Uh, the property is located on the west side of South Laurel, just south of West 11 Mile Road. Um, it is located in a section of... Um, properties that were platted at a width of 30 feet that does not conform to our one-family residential um, standards. Um, there, well, I don't think we have uh, an overview, but I could go to it if you would like. Um, so the property contains a single-family dwelling um, with just um, about five and a half feet of a north side yard here, which um, is not wide enough for the you know eight foot driveway that we would require. Uh, so the petitioners um, are proposing to locate a uh, 12 by 20 feet uh, concrete driveway or parking pad um, in front of their home. Uh, and per the zoning ordinance, off street parking for one and two family dwellings must be located in the side or rear yard. Um, but due to um, the the site constraints, they are requesting a variance um, to this requirement. So it, um, yeah, so that's the request before you. Let me see if I can get to the survey here just to display it for the audience. Um, these are site photos that um, staff took. So um, you can see the home here. Scrolling down, this is actually a parking area for a neighboring, um, I think, chiropractic uh, business. So here's the image. Um, the lot is 30 feet wide, as I stated. Um, it's, it has more depth than required by the, the zoning ordinance for the zone district, so it's 120 feet deep. But, um, you know, even so, there's just don't have that width to, to get a driveway by the side. So... Um, the applicant also did supply um, some photos of similar um, parking areas located in front of um, <coughs> homes in the neighborhood. Um, staff couldn't confirm the legality of these. I didn't, you know, I I didn't look up every every example, but at least on their block, I couldn't find, um, you know explicit zoning approvals for these parking pads. So um, just the fact that they exist doesn't necessarily mean that they were granted variances, but for context, um, the applicant did submit these photos, and so they are part of your packet this evening. Do you have any uh, questions for me? Any questions for staff? Yes, ma'am. So I noticed on the other side of Laurel, yes, there's an alley that accesses people's garages. Mm -hmm. Was there ever an alley here that was taken away or, or the city said we don't want it so gave all the residents that land and mm. then some properties became landlocked so to speak without access to that I'm not sure of um, and I I don't know I could pull up the plat map but I'm not certain because they look like from an aerial view they're mm -hmm. the same chunk of square block mm -hmm. one doesn't look a little bit larger because it has an alley so I was just wondering that mm -hmm. that was a possible reasoning that nobody can on that street especially no one seems to be able to access mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. backyards yeah a car any other questions is the petitioner present if he is please come forward Good evening. Hello, I'm Gail Meisner, and I'm um, her husband, Dan. And uh, while I'm saying my opening statement, I want to pass along, you saw pictures that were taken by the staff of the parking in front of the houses. And I think this is more representative of um, the parking situation that we deal on a daily basis, you can see. But... Um, as Julianne had said, uh, 
that the home is located on a 30 foot wide lot <coughs> with a commercial business to our north that has a six foot concrete wall adjacent to our property. The size of the lot, the city's prior approval of converting a residential lot into commercial parking and its approval of the erection of a six foot concrete wall represents the property's hardship. There's just no way to get a car in there. This hardship prevents parking in the close proximity of the residents for normal loading and unloading of persons, packages, et cetera, into and out of the home. By approving this request, I think it would, we both believe it would bring the residents more in line as it showed all the other parking pads that were on all the properties adjacent to us. It would also um, it would also allow the removal of the vehicle from the roadway for street sweeping, leaf removal, snow removal. There's really no place for a car to go other than a parking structure two blocks away during these times. And we would thank you very much for your consideration of allowing us to put this in the front of the home. You know, that, you raise an interesting question. I'm just, for curiosity's sake, what do you do during a snow emergency? <laughs> we, we are... Excuse, I'll answer Go ahead, that one. you answer that one. <laughs> We're snowbirds. Ah. Okay, we bought this, we moved from Waterford to Royal Oak. We never, our kids live in Royal Oak, and we wanted to be close to the grandbabies. All right, we never dreamed, as it depicts on your one drawing that there's the lot next to us to the north is empty. That lot is continuously full. It's a commercial lot and it's overflowing onto the street. We don't have, it's just been horrible this summer. Yeah. We just moved there this summer, this spring. And, it, and we, when we purchased the house, there weren't any cars. <laughs> and <laughs> like, much like you came during the day, so did we. You know, they're all out working. The picture that we sent around was much more representative of what we deal with on a daily basis. So, consequently, we're hoping <laughs> that we can have some place to park. There are all rentals in there. The home to the south adjacent to us has three families, six People. Well, you know what, the, it, the thing the is, is people. everybody is trying to be as considerate as they can. Yes. But if we have a guest, well, where do they go? We have the parking passes, you know, we pay the money and it, it is advantageous from that standpoint. But where do they go with their parking passes? You know, down at the end of the block or over on to 2nd Street? You know, or no, that's Third Street there, you know, down there. But that's pretty full because you have all the apartment complexes. So we're kind of in a unique situation where on some other blocks you could park on both sides of the road. You can't park across the street. They're totally, but they, most of them have driveways. They don't always utilize them. They also park on the street with their parking passes. But... We're, we're kind of in a unique situation. Within the, we're very close to the city, and it's nice being close to the city. I love it. And, but it, it really curtails on the use of the property as a residence. Did I see any of the hats? Ms. Well, Anderson, quick yes, question. Right? So being snowbirds, are you decided, I see your home is for sale. Is this yes. because you have no place to park, or is it because you're yes. actually going to? Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, and it will take a $30,000 loss if we sell it for what it's listed for. True story. But uh, I can't, can't walk three blocks or two blocks. It's just not right. I, we just didn't bargain for it. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, we, we were a little surprised. It, would we stay, the listing is, is if upon approval, Okay, we can take the listing off the market. That's how we'd set it up with the listing agent. Do you understand? So uh, if this is approved, and, not, and that, I shouldn't even say it, but 
if it's approved, we could take the listing off. Uh, so that's part of the agreement. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know. Or did, your agent did put in everything that. No, uh -uh. It's but we. I, I will tell you, or. as as even having it on the market, the biggest complaint from anybody looking at it is the parking. That that's the number one complaint. And if, in fact, when we went to Julianne the first time, we just thought, okay, we'll pay the money, we're going to get this done, and she says, oh, no. <laughs> you cannot do that. You have to come here. And we said, oh. And that's when she started looking, and she could not see immediately that anyone pulled a permit mm -hmm. along the street, but we're trying to do it right. We're trying to use our home. It's a nice home. We're trying to just use it and enjoy it. And being, and it is city life. You have to understand we are in the city. So we are part of that. Any other questions? That's our question. That's our case. <laughs> I have a quick one. So if we grant the approval, you're going to be putting in this parking yes. pad? Yes. Not to either break. sell it or no, to me. keep no, it? Not, not this fall. Absolutely not this fall. But I'm just asking if you're going to be doing it because the house is so darn cute that I think you'll do a great job and to will. keep it looking. And I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Right. I'm going to ask you folks to take a seat real quickly so I can open up the public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address the board on this matter? Not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing. And I saw Mr. Curl and Mr. Clatt. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve this. No support. Motion support. Mr. Curl? You know, the, not having anywhere to park your car is, now that we're not all riding horses to work and everything, is, seems like a hardship to me. Um, I, there's nowhere to go. So either start knocking houses down or let these people have a place to park their car is the way I view it. Mr. Clapp? Yeah, I think we have clear practical difficulty here. I don't think we ever like to see 50% of the front yard covered in concrete, but there is good distance from the home to the sidewalks. So you're not going to block the sidewalk with cars from a safety standpoint. So I support. Yes, sir. I'll also support. This is definitely practical hardship that they can't help it. Their lot is uh, totally landlocked. And if you, they don't want concrete, they can do permeable pavers and pavers. have that. <laughs> <have him. laughs> so I, I think allowing them at least a parking spot is uh, uh, least we can do to alleviate their hardship they have. Be reasonable, I think. Right. Yes, ma'am. And I will agree. It makes it much easier for the city to plow those streets. That and Maple, and it is a nightmare sometimes when you can't get your car off the street, and it turns into rut city, and it's horrible. Any other? All right, then I will call for the vote. But first, we're holding you to your word. You better stay in Royal Oak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, you're all set. Thank you so much. Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Item D5, case number 190935, public hearing on the appeal of James Coslow, petitioner and owner for the following variances. A, alter and expand a non-conforming structure. B, waive 10 feet of the minimum required 35-yard rear yard setback. And C, waive 2.5% or 149.2 square feet of the maximal allowable lot coverage of 30% to permit, permit construction of a rear addition to a single family home located at 237 Edmond Avenue. Ms. Hart. Okay, so this um, property is located on Edmond Street between um, Maine and Rochester. So it's located on the north side. It's improved with a um, single story, single family dwelling. Let me just go to a different photo here. Um, so the, the property um, currently maintains a um, non-conforming rear yard setback. So the, the requirement for a single family home is uh, 35 feet from living space to the um, rear property line. This home actually has a um, sunroom on the northwest corner of their home that has a 25-foot uh, rear yard setback. So 
the applicant is proposing an addition that would mirror that um, setback established by the sunroom, um, which would be a um, you know non-conforming um, 25 feet. And so the applicant is requesting a, a waiver of 10 feet to the um, minimum required 35 feet. Additionally, um, the existing home um, is non-conforming as regards coverage. So uh, the requirement for a property of over 6,000 square feet is that uh, the total lot coverage be no greater than 30%. Currently, the coverage with um, the existing home, which has an attached garage, um, is at... Uh, I think it's 31.6% of the lot area. And so the addition of about 150 square feet is would, would bring that total lot coverage to 34%. So the next variance um, is a request to um, expand the nonconformity and to waive an additional 2.5% or 149.2 square feet of the maximum allowable 30% lot coverage. And then the third variance tied in here is just um, a variance to alter or expand a non-conforming structure. It's not conforming as um, it has the non-conforming rear setback as well as um, the non-conforming lot coverage. Um, do you have other questions for Any me? Any questions for Seth at this point? Yes, sir. I do. Um, I was trying to figure out the lot size on this. Yes. And I got confused. Okay, so <laughs> the reason we have a plat map here, um, well, at, uh, okay, so the lot is platted at 60 feet wide by 110 feet deep, except there is a small portion um, in the northwest, northeast corner that's um, cut out. Um, but if you go to the legal description of the property, it's the west 55, 55 feet of that platted lot. Um, so the, how this came to us is that they had submitted for building permits and then building division flagged it. And so that's why the plan you see um, is a partial plot plan and not a full plot plan. However, based upon doing the research and finding the plat map as well as referring to the legal property dis description, we know that the property is um, 55 feet wide and um, 110 feet deep. So actually, let me zoom in on this photo is maybe what I should have done at the very start. So this is an image from Property Gateway, which is um, a mapping program maintained by the county with all um, the local units supply the assessing data. So you can see that the red boundary of the property line does give a, a rectangular shape. The exterior number of 55 shows the true um, width, while the interior number 60 shows what it was platted. So it was platted in that slightly irregular shape, whereas what the parcel is today is a rectangular 55 by 110. Um, feet deep. So it's actually the property to the east that has that extra um, five feet. Mm. Okay. So that was <laughs> that, very long winded. Long, yeah, that, that, <laughs> but okay. I was prepared. I appreciate that, and that helps. Okay. Part of my issue. Great. Because <laughs> then I was I was actually trying to reverse calculate because you didn't have the uh, the total square footage listed in anywhere in here. So based on the percentages that we're we're doing in here, I tried to reverse calculate it. And you had 149.2 square feet is 2.5 percent mm -hmm. uh, lot coverage. So you know, mm -hmm. reverse calculating that, I got a lot of a square footage of 5,968 square feet. So uh, it just some of the numbers didn't okay calculate out to me. Mm -hmm. So I mean, if that's it, it, may just be a matter of correcting what those numbers are. I because uh, it it sounds like. It, with 55 by 110, we're looking at 6,050 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, well, the fact of the matter is, well. Okay. And it doesn't make a difference because mm -hmm. it would change the variance because if we're doing 30% lot coverage, 
Mm -hmm. so I just want to make sure we're approving an appropriate sure or considering an appropriate uh, a, a variance request um, okay so it's still over it's still over 6,000 square feet so it's at the 30 percent right it would be at the third you're talking about the percentage of the addition Right, the percentage of the addition might be different than what is presented in here. Because mm -hmm. if we're if we're looking at you know thirty thirty percent of one thousand eight hundred or thirty percent of uh, the six thousand fifty is one hundred and eight one thousand eight hundred and fifteen, but then a, you know two point five percent is if we're needing an extra one hundred and forty nine point two, that would be. Mm -hmm. 49.2, oops, divided by 6050. Uh, I guess you could round it to 2.5, 2.46. Oh. Okay, I was wrong. I was being a little too legalistic oh, okay. there, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that's okay. fine. I just was like, we're okay. I used we're Excel. Good. No, it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So being generous is okay because if it is only two point yep. four six, that's less. Yeah. That's so, my bad. okay. Thank Are you. We okay? Sorry for sorry nope, for putting you on okay. the spot. That's okay. <laughs> Mr. Curtis, did I see your hand? No. <laughs> <laughs> your hand. No. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to call the petitioner's office. <laughs> <laughs> we made a mess of this thing. <laughs> All by ourselves too. <laughs> We're good at that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, James Coslow, 237 Edmond. Um, and uh, the, I mean, I think she explained what we're looking to do. Um, we are trying, the addition is to expand the master bedroom um, and add a walk-in closet. Uh, just a, a pretty basic addition. We're going to keep it, um, the exterior will be the same as the existing house. We'll use the reclaimed brick um, with a, a pitched roof that'll be symmetrical, but a mirror image of what's on the front of the garage. Um, the uh, current bedroom is 10 by 12, just a little pokey Royal Oak bedroom. So we're going to push that out and basically just extend it um, and then add a walk-in closet. We're not going to do any plumbing work or anything. Um, not doing any uh, foundation work in the basement, just a basic foundation underneath it. Um, yeah, fairly straightforward. We happen to have a small lot which is unfortunate. Um, when we bought the house, we didn't realize the 35 foot, we saw the sunroom, so we assumed that that, that was the limit. And uh, then when we pulled the permit, that's when we found out that we needed the variance. So that's why we're here before you. Right. Any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Olpak. I don't have necessarily any problem with expanding nonconformity or the 35 foot. My heartburn is a little bit with more the, it already being over the 30%. How, if I correct, your house is already a four-bedroom house, right? Uh, no, it was listed as a three-bedroom house, but one of them is actually connects through to the sunroom, so it's really more of a den or a home office. It's okay. a three listed as a three-bedroom house. Okay, so it's not okay. the one thing I saw set for. Uh, there is a, uh, a a bedroom downstairs, but it's not you know there's no egress window or anything, so it's just a finished basement. So, and, and, and trust me, I have a smaller bedroom than yours for master 10 by 11. Because uh, the hardship that sort of wanting a bigger bedroom is sort of your own personal made hardship. Is there anything preventing you from using this home as it is right now? Not as it is right now. Um, the hardship is that um, the intent is for this to be sort of our aging home to, uh, to get into. We're both in our 50s now looking 10 years, 15 years down the road. Um, finding a ranch in Royal Oak is difficult um, in this area. Where we're at is actually surrounded. We, we like that part of Royal Oak with the old tall trees, real tight, uh, uh, quiet, and dark uh, dark backyards, but it's uh, surrounded by colonials, which we didn't want. We wanted a uh, an older um, um, uh, ranch, but not on... I grew up on Magnolia, which is just a row, row after row after row of Royal Oak Ranch, you know, of the four different designs. Um, so we wanted something a little more unique. Um, so that's the hardship. And then <clears throat> we were, I don't want to say misled, but um, our, the, both the seller and our real estate agent both sort of gave us the, oh, that won't be a problem speech when we said, well, if we do this, we're going to want to expand out the back. 
and mm. they sort of waved it off. Um, and so now we're sitting here going, well, what do we do? The remedy that we would have would likely be uh, moving um, at, at some point in the not too distant future. So it would be a hardship for us to do that, but that would be the remedy. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Are you going to have to remove any trees? To no. We, we don't have a single tree on our lot, but I rake oh. 11 <laughs> times every fall. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I feel for you. So, I put up a big net. And, and to the coverage issue, I know part of the coverage issue is aesthetic, but part of it is the physicality of, of drainage and that kind of thing. Um, our lot and the lot to the west both have French drains in the backyard. And then the empty lot to the east um, is lower than ours or the house on the other side. So it's a natural basin for all the houses around there. And then our French drains and the neighbor's French drains do keep the backyards from getting wet. Right. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Curtis. Quick question. Do you happen to know the total square footage of your home with the proposed addition? What would that number be? I, no. I don't have oh, that. It's okay. going to be it's going to be in the twelve to thirteen hundred range mm -hmm. maximum, including the garage, everything under roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a fairly small, tight little house. Do, does the roof get included? I'm sorry. Does the attached garage, because it's under the roof, get <coughs> included in Coverage. in a different way? If it had been a um, detached garage, would it be no, any different? Not because in the, it's still a coverage. Not area. in the coverage calculation. Yeah. Right. Any others? And with the addition, the living space is about 1,400 square feet, 1,386. Yeah. <coughs> That's right, Let me open up the public hearing and see if anybody wants to address us on this matter. Don't go too far. Oh. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak with us on this? All right, not seeing anybody. I will close the public hearing, bring it back to this side of the table. Do you have any additional questions for this gentleman? Mr. Clatt? I'm going to go ahead and make a motion to approve uh, the variance request. When I review these cases, I typically look away to, to try to lessen the, the request. But I just don't see that here. I think this is a very modest addition. I think it'll help modernize the house. I also appreciate the fact that you're not you're not making the setback condition any worse. You're, you're keeping in line with the, well, the current setback. Well, before you go any further, is there a second? Yeah, I'll support that. All right, go ahead. Continue. Thank you. So again, um, I don't think this will impact the neighborhood. It's in the rear yard. It's not visible from the street. So those are my reasons for support of this. Mr. Kroll? Yeah, I even went further than that. I kind of snuck around the house to see what was going on back. <laughs> what is it with the <laughs> trespassing? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I would have told you I was doing it if I saw you, but it was early in the morning. I didn't think I could find um, Yeah, and it's like, you know, again, it goes back to uh, how great it would be for these people. No one else is going to see what they're doing anyway. So, I, I mean... This is a win-win for everybody, I think. So I'll strongly support this. Yes, ma'am. I support it. Um, I think this the hardship that I see by today looking at the neighborhood, it's really a small lot in the whole neighborhood. So, this, so that's a hardship as far as what the other houses are built on and the value in there. I think it kind of brings your house up to what is in the neighborhood right now. I think it's a great design. I'm in support. Yes, ma'am. I also think that if it's only a skosh over the 6,000 square feet, that being said, it would the the percentage would be actually under the thirty five percent if it was a small lot. Yeah. So. Anybody else? All right. Then I will call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion to approve, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion passes. You're all set. Thank you. That brings us down to our final item of business, item D six, which is case number one nine zero nine three six. Public hearing on the appeal of Charles McPeak, petitioner and owner for the following variance. Waive the minimum required six foot masonry screening wall to permit removal of an existing masonry screening wall along the north property line of 1702 West 13 Mile. Ms. Sherhart. Oh, okay, so you may recall that back earlier this summer, um, the condominium association uh, to the north of the property was approved for a fence variance to allow an eight foot fence. instead of a six foot fence. <clears throat> so um, that happened and, you know, they are having, um, you know, they approved um, site plan for the gas station for for the petitioner is that there needs to be a um, you know a land use buffer and a six foot masonry uh, wall was required um, 
now that a fence has been approved at the other site, functionally there is a um, land use buffer in between the two properties. However, the fact remains that if we're looking just at this parcel, um, you know, the variance is to not have the the six foot masonry screening wall when it is required. So that essentially is the variance request. Any questions for Mr. Hart? Okay. I, I, have, I have one question. I'm sorry. Well, okay. And my question is, Melrose Court is the condominiums right yeah. behind it who, who got the variance for the eight foot fence. Yes. I noticed as I was driving down Crooks that on the other side of Melrose Court, there's only a three foot brick retaining wall versus a six foot one. And that separates another set of condominiums. I mm -hmm. Is there. The other side, can you be more specific about what other side? The other side, side of the. the north. Melrose, what's that? North of Melrose. Correct, north yeah. of Melrose Court. So it would oh. be the north side. Because we're, de we're dealing with the south side, which is actually the gas station's yeah. responsibility. But on the north side of Melrose Court, it's almost like an identical three-foot oh. brick fence. Okay. And are those just, it's it's different between like a commercial well, versus that? Exactly. I, okay. I believe the issue is the commercial use needs to have the landscape, like Ooh. the buffer between a differing use. So between commercial and residential, something is required, whereas... I could verify, but I don't believe the property to the north of the condominium association is a different is a non-residential use. Okay. Well, it it, it, it is so it's residential because it's condominiums. Oh, but I okay. Just Further condominiums. If, okay. In the beginning, they looked at it so as an <coughs> enterprise type of a thing, and they had to foot. put some kind of buffer well, above, above that, yeah, and they got away with a three foot fence, which looks cool. great. Mm -hmm. Three foot mm -hmm. brick fence. So yeah, that was my. Mr. Curtis, really quickly, of course, the <laughs> ordinance is asking for a six-foot masonry buffer measured, in this case, from the parking lot six feet up. Correct. Yes. And I, I forgot to mention that the applicant is proposing to put in a, a three-and-a-half-foot masonry retaining wall in lieu of the six-foot fence that is um, required by per the, the site plan approval. Um, so... It's not that absence of anything. It's just a different um, wall that they are proposing. We, well, hold on. So we, we, can, we, we have a batting order here. <laughs> if, if we grant this variance, they don't have to put up any screening wall, but they still would have to keep a three-foot retaining. retaining wall? That I'm not sure of. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy. Mr. Murphy knows everything. When the filling station received original site plan approval in the, and they're here, they can confirm it, the exact year, uh, I think it was in the early 1960s, the adjacent property to the north was a single family home and nearby school site. And so there was a, we'll say, a hard transition from a commercial use uh, filling station to single family residential. They were required to have that six foot brick screening wall. Uh, the house and the school site were purchased and now are different uses and we have the adjacent condominium kind of multifamily development. That development um, has a different grade level that the petitioner can speak to and the petitioner is looking to remove the existing six foot masonry screening, uh, masonry brick screening wall that's falling down and they've discussed in lieu of that to make up that difference in elevation that they're proposing a retaining wall to hold back the dirt so that the adjacent condominium association that received the <laughs> fence variance from you several months ago can install their fence without it falling over. There needs to be something to protect that difference in elevation and they can describe where the height or the measurement distance of how far off the two are at different points as we go along the entire north property line, that common boundary line. So I noticed that the fence isn't up. Is that because there's an issue with this wall that they tie together? They do in the sense that if, if someone installed the, the fence, whether it be six feet or eight feet tall, and uh, the petitioner elected to replace their six-foot 
masonry screening wall, they would have to dig away all that dirt. That difference in elevation would cause the newly installed fence to just completely collapse. So we really they, 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 they kind of go hand in hand. Something yeah. has to be done on both properties in order to have a uh, functional boundary Thank and you. for everything to stand up right at the end of the day. Mr. Clark. So just to simplify, the condo handles the screening and the gas station handles the retaining wall. Is that correct? That's essentially what they're what they're proposing, but we certainly won't uh, allow them the will allow them the opportunity to explain themselves better. Sounds good. But, uh, is there some kind of like an engineer that's coming in to say this kind of retaining wall to 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 maintain the elevation of differences of the? The of petitioner the can describe if they've been in conversation with a structural someone of a structural background okay. to to demonstrate how that that could be accomplished. Right, not seeing any more questions. Is the petitioner present? Well, still from sitting. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Um, hi, I'm Karen DeWitt. Um, my family owns a gas station. Um, we've been there 51 years. <laughs> and um, so Mobile Oil put the original wall in in 1967, and my dad took over the place in 1968. So we, you know, we're the only ones that have ever been there. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I don't know why. Um, so, yes, it's a screening wall. It only is to screen the gas station from Mrs. Nepper's house, who was the original owner. Um, so there was no great difference when the house was there, but when the condos got built, the grade got yes. hired raised and that's where the problem lies um, the original blu blueprints state that there was no grade change uh, in 1994 when we had the wall repaired when we had extra um, oh I guess we had um, new construction done and it, again it stated that you know there was no um, that it was a, that it was a screening wall um, anyways, we've maintained the wall throughout the years by doing tuck pointing and um, replacing the spalding bricks. And I'm sorry, I just don't like to talk in front of people. I'm You're doing fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. So in 1998, um, the McLeish Custom Building um, put up the condos. And that's when the grade change happened. And on his blueprints um, that he submitted to the city, there wasn't supposed to be any trees along this wall whatsoever. There were um, trees and plants on his, but not in this place along the wall, you know, where, they, where the driveway was and stuff there was. But anyways, um, they were supposed to keep the trees that were originally there, which were large evergreen trees. Well, there's pictures, which none of the pictures are up there, but um, I have several pictures of what it used to look like as far as the evergreens that were planted. I've got pictures of... Um, you can circulate them if you... Okay. Would like. Well, I sent them in with you guys. So these are the pictures of when the construction was. And, you know, there's a large construction going alongside the whole wall. There's debris piled up against the wall. There's all kinds of different things that are happening while the construction is over there. So oh, anyhow, um, that's part of the reason that, you know, the brick wall is not as sturdy as it should be. Um, the other thing is um, when he pulled out the trees that were there because he killed them when he drove along the root system, um, part of my wall fell down. So when that got, he, he, he did put it back up, but he didn't put it the way it should have been. There was no, um, what do you call it? The support, the stanchions and the cement and things that go in a normal normal wall. That wasn't put in. So anyways, um, after planting all the arborvitae along all of um, the wall, 
um, there's the other pictures. The Arbor Vitae all along there had to be watered. So they put a soaker hose along the wall. And, and, and also when they planted the Arbor Vitae, they again lifted up probably about a foot and a half, piled more dirt to plant the plants, put the soaker hose along there, and then they would leave it on for days. And when I come in and my parking lot is flooded, it obviously has gone through the brick wall. That's a screening wall. It doesn't have visqueen. It doesn't have tar to, you know, protect it. So anyhow, um, in the, the, the extra dirt, the planting, the watering, and then the removal, which happened in 2019, of all the arborvitae along the fence has, you know, with the root systems and everything, has taken its toll on the wall. So, um, uh, let's see, after, da, 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 okay. Um, so anyway, we've been there 51 years, and we try very hard, you know, and to keep our business and our grounds looking clean and nice for our customers. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways. Well, I actually, I, I do have one question for you because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the letter that's on, uh, that was written on your letterhead for Big Peak Sink. So all parties have come to an agreement that the condo is going to install the fence that they're going to install. You're going to install the three and a half foot masonry retaining wall. Right. Kumbaya. Everybody's going to be happy at the end of the day if, if, if that happens. <laughs> That's the idea. All right. Good to me. Everybody <laughs> agrees <laughs> that, that. Hallelujah. <laughs> we don't want to have to put up the wall. The, the wall to put back up as a retaining wall at six foot is $47,000. I don't want to pay that. <laughs> you know, we don't make that much money on our gas. <laughs> okay. But anyways. To lower it to like the three and a half, four feet, I've gotten a quote for twenty-seven thousand dollars. Okay, that's still high, but it's not forty-seven thousand. Okay, so um, the condo, the the alternative is if you're going to make me put up a six-foot wall, it's not going to be a retaining wall. It will simply be a screening wall. The condos are going to have to figure out what to do with all that dirt. And as it stands right now, the condos are the dirt, you know, at their at their level is up here, and it, there's a natural trough from when they planted the arborvitae and the dirt, dirt that's on the wall. It comes down when it rains. The water goes out. It seeps into the ground, or it goes out one way or the other. Um, if I have to just put up a screening wall, they're going to have to remove all of that dirt. Then it's going to have their dirt up here. When it rains, like the rain that we had yesterday, <laughs> it's going to slope down towards my wall, and they're going to have to figure out how to not have their, that happen. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be costly to them to have to figure out how are we going to fix this. So our solution is because I mean this has been going on for over two years, trying to figure out what can we do, what's best for us. They have the trees. The trees are hurting my wall. I mean, we're trying to be neighborly here. You know, we, we want it to, to work out. We don't want to have to go take it to court or anything like that. That is not our intention. Um, I have gotten quotes from Craftsman Masonry and also from Venetian Masonry. And um, uh, we're going to work together on getting this wall put back up and I have given them the quotes and they have we haven't spoken about the quotes but they're going to have to help me pay for a portion of um, making it retaining because it's benefiting them as well we haven't discussed what would be acceptable that's another conversation, you know, coming. But um, at least at this point, if we can get the variance to have it lowered. Um, I've also given you pictures of, um, I drew a picture, actually, of what it will look like. There's a picture of their fence that they have right now that is six foot. Um, 
I think you have it up there, but if not, I have one here. It, um, this is the picture that I drew. I think here, right? Yep. Oh, there you go. That's yeah. my wonderful drawing. Um, <laughs> So you can't see any of theirs, and then right below it is the three and a half or four foot tall brick wall that you know we're proposing to put up. And then the next picture should be of what the fence that they are putting up looks like right now, with where the, our wall has already fallen down. It's approximately three and a half feet. So there's not going to be this gap here so you're not going to see any of their dirt you know we want to make sure that it's you know <coughs> gonna so look nice on top. so that's you know that's the idea yeah, yeah that was it back up one right there so that's a six foot fence that they have right now they're going to put up another fence that's two feet higher than that and then the brick wall that's there right now of course is going to be at least that high if not a little bit higher than that so that there's not going to be a gap and you're not going to see any you know dirt in between um, so the variance you know for for the chapter 770 zoning states that it doesn't have to be a masonry seven or six foot masonry screening wall anymore I mean it shows that it can be different kinds of material so I really don't see why you know you would insist that we put up a six foot brick wall again. Um, I guess the, the, I told you already that if we had to put it up that it would just be a screening wall and not a, a retaining wall. And that both neighbors would benefit from it. And um, I guess the hardship is basically trying to figure out what to do with all that dirt. You know, it, for them, it's a hardship for both of us, really. The, the cost for us, the amount of effort they have to make, you know, to figure out what to do with the water, what to do with the dirt. The eight foot that you um, allow them to have, this fence, it's going to come down probably close to two feet because of the amount of dirt that's piled up on the uh, the brick wall right now. Okay. Well, so, let, let, let me move this forward. You, you certainly made your case. I, th I think we understand <laughs> where you're coming from. So okay. go, take a seat if you want. I'm going to open up the public hearing because I'm sure these folks have a couple things that they want to say. But Ms. Sherhart, I've got a question for you procedurally. Yeah. We granted the variance for the condo association to build the eight-foot screening wall. Right. They're asking for a wave the minimum required six foot masonry wall. That's the, uh, the variance they're asking for, but there's nothing in the language that indicates that we, we're going to compel them to put up a three and a half foot retaining wall. That's true. Um, I, I guess, I mean, I mean, Joseph, I don't think there's necessarily anything in the approved site plan that references a retaining wall because at that time there wasn't the grade change. So the variance is really for what's on the book. I don't know if that's correct. If it's a retaining wall and it's making up the difference in elevation, it's not screening anything. It's not a screening wall. Right. It's just a retaining wall that they've elected to, uh, to work towards. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be serving any screening purpose for and under the ordinance, it would it would not be a wall uh, so to screen the difference in land uses. Should, should this board offer as part of the motion? Yes, if you telling them to build the retaining wall at three or three and a half feet, whatever it is, as opposed to just eliminating the need for a screening wall. If after the public comment you hear comments that you feel uh, are appropriate to to warrant that motion uh, that motion that inclusion. In elements in a motion, then absolutely, uh, it has some, yes, it has, it ties into the logic of your variance request and the end result of the difference in the two properties and coming to some, help, helping them come to some agreement with the difference in the land use elevation. Excellent, thank you. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Who wants to speak first? I'm uh, Michael Roberts. I'm treasurer for the Indian Wells Homeowners Association, which is directly to the north. 
of uh, Exxon's uh, ga at Mc McPeak's gas station. Um, just uh, in terms of some history as well, the, none, of, none of the owners were there 20 years ago when the builders actually did all this work, so we can't speak to anything that happened before uh, relative towards uh, dirt being pushed up against the screen wall or the planting of the arborvitaes and so forth. When we took position, possession of the, uh, of the association, I think it was 94, 95, we were very careful to, to lower the watering and try to preserve things. Uh, most recently when we, um, when the wall fell uh, and uh, we were working with Karen in terms of trying to get the scheduling out, we pulled the arborvitaes out, we paid extra to get them dug out by hand to try to preserve or risk any further damage, not risk any further damage uh, to the wall. So um, I think this is representative of some really good progress in terms of the working relationship between the Homeowners Association and um, the uh, gas station. Uh, we absolutely do not object to the variance that's being requested here in terms of lowering the height. In fact, it helps to alleviate a potential hardship for us as well, just in terms of trying to maintain the uh, property between the wall and the existing wall, if it were to be at the existing height, which would, would create a pretty significant drop and trying to maintain plants and those kind of weeds that would grow up there would be a problem. So the lower height actually helps us in that regard. Um, our only concern about the variance or, or really just kind of a, a, a thought about that is just the existing wall that runs north-south is at a higher height. This would be at a lower height, some kind of a transition just in terms of making it look aesthetically pleasing between when those two walls meet rather than having a wall here and then on a wall here with a two-foot drop or whatever that would be, would be uh, preferred. Um, we're obviously working with her in terms of uh, thinking through how best to work through uh, helping to pay for this and all this, uh, even though we weren't really involved in any of the decision making that went along with that. So, any questions? Yes, my only question would be the same one I asked her. So, I mean, then again, I'll reference the same letter. I mean, at the end of the day, if we approve this and you do your thing and she does their thing, you're going to be happy on your side as well. Absolutely. All right. All right. Mr. Gavin? I guess I was just mildly curious about, it sounds like there's still some talks to go here in terms of monetary, but is it like kind of like both sides have agreed that they're going to contribute somehow to this and you're just got to kind of nail down the details or is that still like, I was just curious as to where that stood. Uh, we. Uh, the board has agreed to uh, put some money in. We had a, a figure amount. We just got the quotes. We've got to work through all that. Okay. All right, thank you. Huh. All right, anybody else? Yeah. All right. Not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing and bring it back to this side of the table. Mr. Opak? I shall move to grant the motion as requested with the stipulation that um, a retaining type wall be built uh, to the height of, what is that, three and a half, four feet, wherever it needs to be above the, the soil there. All right. We have a motion. I'll support. We have support. Um, Mr. Murphy or Mr. Sherhart, I mean, are you happy with that motion? Do you want any additional language or? All right. Okay. Floor is yours, sir. Um, Basically, the hardship is what was there when it was first built is not there what it is now. Um, it sort of makes silly, as the homeowner association said, to have a wall that's required to be six feet tall and create a crevice in there, making it hard to maintain. So I, I think this is the best option for everybody. And um, by granting this, they can then work out the whole transition at the corner as to how they want to do it, because that would still be... Uh, above the variance, so I think it's acceptable. And yeah, I think I think that grade difference is is the hardship. It's it's uh, it's caused all kinds of problems with that wall, and I think this is probably the clearest case I've ever seen of good fences making good neighbors. You know, it it uh, I think it could work to everybody's benefit. Yes, ma'am. 
Raising the grade between the two properties, I mean, that should that happened at some point, probably shouldn't have happened at some point. Sounds like and they dug up the basements and just moved dirt. And they moved someplace to put the dirt. And then we could keep talking about a three-and-a-half-foot masonry retaining wall. My concern is there, how do we know we need a three-and-a-half-foot? Maybe we only need a three-foot. Maybe we need a four-foot. It seems to me we're kind of putting the cart before the horse to say we need a three-and-a-half. It's just my opinion that that, that should be some kind of... Um, engineer that's a, a structural engineer that's looking at that to say what do we really need and then go to say should we grant that which I don't think granting the variance is the thing it's more what it ha needs to be done to hold back that dirt just my thoughts Mr. Wood did you have a comment you, that you wanted to add to that well we yes the, the, come to the microphone please okay. the, um, the two co companies that we had come out to give us a quote <laughs> we've measured that wall 18 different times so it, within the last two years it's going to be three and so a half was, to four feet uh, depending on how how much higher we want it as to where the bottom of their fence is we don't want to have that gap that's why i said three and a half to four i didn't say three half i didn't say four i wanted there to be a little bit of a leeway so that you know oh. we could take that into consideration Mr. Curtis. Just sorry to jump in front. I wanted to ask the petitioner. And the people that quoted you were quoting a retaining wall, as right. in sufficient right. to hold back I have the earth. Had, I've had quotes for um, screening wall, yeah. retaining wall, six foot tall, three and a half foot tall. The guy that I just had come and give me the last quote, he decided it needed to be four foot. So, I mean, I've, I've gotten lots of different, you know, things. But, yes, because we've been going back and forth saying, well, why should I have to put up a retaining wall? Well, this is the reason. We don't know what to do with the dirt. Okay, so now we have to have the guy come back out and quote me for the, the shorter wall, hoping that, you know, we could get the variance. So <laughs> we've gone back and forth lots of times. I have another yes, yes, well, question course. for you, as long as you're there. Is there a, a real price difference between a retaining wall versus a screening wall of the same it material comes. and the same. Well, we, we, well, well, okay, so we had to replace okay. the, the wall on the west side in 2010. We chose to go with block because it looks nice. We wanted something that matched our building because they didn't have the same kind of brick that we had, you know, in 1968. So we want to do the same thing on this wall. So we're paying the extra cost to have that. Yeah, we could have had a poured whatever yeah. concrete you know something that does the job but it doesn't look nice okay so, so, um, but yes okay. to have it retaining versus to have it uh, screening there's a lot more to it a, a screening wall only is blocking view right. a retaining wall is is holding back it's retaining right. the dirt so yes there is a, a large cost difference in that so then my question to the to maybe Joseph or the board or whatever is that we are implementing we've gone from a screening wall to a retaining wall in putting a burden on someone who probably shouldn't have had that burden on in the first place that's uh, I am all for the fixing it I'll support the the petitioner here but I don't know if we should add retaining wall cuz I don't think that at that point we're putting the burden on her and it or, or that that business, and I don't know that they... It, but it's been demonstrated that a screening wall is going to fail. Right. Well, I know, yes, but I, I also think that it may have to be up to the petitioner, and I don't know that it's our call to say, okay, now you, even though in the beginning you had a screening wall and it still says that the elevation is the same in the paperwork and everything, no one's come out and changed that, that we're we're now requesting. I hear what you're saying, but that's also quite frankly why I asked her and this gentleman the same question. I mean, right, right. This, this no, is, they, I, they I brokered understand. their deal. This is yeah, what and we I agree. want. You know, the, 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 they're entering into this agreement as willing parties. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But okay. Well, I mean, that's. I just wanted everybody to. Right. I, kind of I have the same it. issue. Why is it her responsibility? Right. They've changed everything by putting that dirt in, but if they have an agreement, I'm fine with it. Yes, she shouldn't have to. All right, well, then, did you have a comment, sir? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We have a motion, Frank? <laughs> did people get to speak to the motion? Yeah, my, my point is uh, to the motion. 
uh, I'll be in support of the of the motion. Um, and yeah, I hope they work it out between them. But it's not our decision. We're not the court here. <laughs> it's not us to say who should do what. It's for them to work it out, and hopefully the wall stands forever. <laughs> that, that's my approach as well. I'll be supporting it, but I think they can work this out among themselves. I can't improve on a deal between two people that seems going in the right direction. So does that mean the stipulation should be retracted from the motion uh, on the I would. table uh, or on the floor? Do you could you explain the logic behind the addition the additional contingency associated with waiving the variance request? My logic is knowing from my experience, you have to have a retaining wall. A screen this is why the brick wall failed. It originally was a screening wall and then the soil got put there and it was never built for a retaining wall. So we can say, yeah, you can do a screening wall at three and a half, four feet, but she's gonna be just throwing money away. Um, because basically, if it's a screening wall, it'll screen until the soil pushes it over, and then she'll have to go do it again. So I'm trying to help her out the best as I can, so long as this soil is here, it needs to be a retaining wall. Mr. Clatt? I'll support what Anthony said, too. I think both walls will fail eventually. If, that, if the retaining wall goes, that fence is most likely going to go, too. So it, it needs to be retaining wall. It's critical. I'd like them to engineer this thing, and I, I don't think it's really our role to tell them how it should be done. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Anderson, what you're saying is why should I have to be the one to pay for the retaining portion of it when it wasn't my dirt that was put on it? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I, I, I didn't want the definition of the, of the and, and you, only you have the burden of of that right well even though I know you'll put in a retaining wall because it's your best interest mm -hmm. I just didn't know if the way we were phrasing it was necessary it, I guess is what I'm saying in my opinion if you got the soil where it's at their fence is screening so by default they don't even need to screen anything on here that's true mm -hmm. but it fails totally Mr. Gavin uh, I kind of look at it a little bit differently in, in, uh, in terms of why I think that this, this caveat needs to be in there. In terms of if we don't, if, the, if a retaining wall is not constructed, right, something's going to have to be decided in terms of either removing dirt uh, or, you know, something along those lines. And our ordinance, I mean, the very reason that we're getting rid of the screening wall requirement is because a retaining wall is being built. That's like that's it. So if if it weren't going, if there were or there were not going to be a retaining wall, some other solution would have to be found, and it would then default back to our normal ordinance, which requires a six foot screening wall in cases like this. So that's that's kind of how I view it. Is is if if a retaining wall is not built, some something else will have to happen with that dirt, and then we will fall back to our normal position of requiring a screening wall. I think we're designing this, so we really yeah, I, think need to <laughs> I think we've overthought it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> With that being said, I'm just going to call for the vote. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You're all set. <laughs> Hopefully you guys get it all worked out. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Hart, any other business for the good of the city? Joseph? Did you want to speak about the... Was, Mr. Kroll? I would be interested to see, I know there's some changes that have come about from our last meeting with them, and I, I would like to, uh, I'd like to hear the changes. Which case are you referring to? Oh, the, the motion for reconsideration? Yeah, motion for reconsideration. So are you making that as a motion? Yes, I'm making it as a motion. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Yeah, please. Give us a little direction here. Okay. Just a refresher on, on what a bearing, what a motion to reconsider is. A reconsideration is essentially taking the decision 
that was previously made on a case in this particular instance, there was a unanimous decision to deny all of the variance requests. The reconsideration, a reconsideration request would be to take that previous motion and to say it never existed and to discard it. Uh, the reconsideration, if you, there's a motion and a support, if the majority of the board approve the reconsideration request, that will grant the petitioner the opportunity to reapply. And essentially, the exact same variance request is able to be reheard, uh, get a fresh notice to all the adjacent property owners, and it would be a reconsideration is to hear the exact same variance requests that you previously heard but to view them in what you may consider to be new uh, evidence, new light. So, well, may I ask a question about that procedurally? Um, so the petitioner could uh, then be reheard on the exact same variances with no fee to the petitioner. No, there would be a new fee. But on the exact same variances? Yes. That's the petitioner that's could bring new variances with an exact with a new fee now if they were considerably different <clears throat> excuse me if they were considerably different from what you previously as opposed, denied as opposed to having to wait a year or something yes yeah. exactly okay. and that I had a conversation with the petitioner uh, the day after you had denied it last month uh, with some <clears throat> tweaks and different concepts and um, it wasn't enough to say justifying being a different variance request. It was essentially slight modifications or reductions on the variances that were previously considered. Um, the board can't hear the same variance request. You can reconsider the same ones and grant them those variances or less than those variances, but they can't be heard um, on the exact same variance request for one full year unless you reconsider the request again. That is to essentially take the motion that previously, in this case, was to deny, deny all the variance requests, say, we never discussed that, pay new application fee, notice everybody again, and say, this is getting an entirely fresh new review under under a reconsideration. Let me ask you the question differently then. And of course, with all due respect, does this board have the ability to say, we disagree with your decision, that the, the changes are not significant enough to warrant a new case and therefore we'll grant him the ability to come in front of us and we considered a new case basically overriding an administrative decision. Is that a, something that can be done procedurally? One more time on some of those aspects. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Well, no, no. So, I mean, so you pretty much said that the tweaks that he offered were not significant enough in your mind. Yes. And what if we were to say, well, we respectfully disagree and we'd like to hear the new case? Then he would have to seek an administrative appeal in front ah, of the board right. from our determination if you uh, <laughs> overturned our determination, he would then be able to file an application month there out thereafter okay. to be able to come back. Correct. Right. Yes. It's, it's a way to get to the same thing, which takes a lot longer. Gotcha. And, gotcha. and okay. presuming that the remainder of the board uh, felt the same way you did in right, approved right, right, a motion right, to overturn just, our decision. Yes. I just want to have the academic debate. I Absolutely. Possible, I, I, so. Hey, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I agree. All right, so we have a motion. Mm -hmm. Was there a second? Yeah. I, I'll second. And I'm uh, just for clarity's sake, this is case 1908292122 North Edgeworth Avenue. Okay. So that we can have that on the record <laughs> <laughs> and people know what we were actually talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, one question, too. I was not in attendance last month when this was heard initially, does that have any impact on what I can vote on? No. Okay. No, you can vote on this, this motion on the table. I will say that if the motion is approved, the petitioner can contact our office, uh, probably Julie be a good contact, uh, to be able to, to get that application from you and that fee so that we can process it as fast as possible. We do have to have it published in the newspaper and sent to the newspaper next Friday. So it would be a, a short turnaround time, but certainly capable of putting it on the next agenda. So I guess I would ask my fellow board members, because to be quite frank, you sent the email out about 6 o'clock this evening, I believe. There was one the day after your uh, whatever last month's decision was, and then there was one earlier today. Okay, I don't recall the one last month, but I'm not saying I didn't get it. But anyways, I'm not even familiar with what the changes are. If anybody had a chance to read it and wants to sort of I, chime in a little bit. I know, the, I know that the staircase, which was going out as a, as a variance, has been turned. I, I don't know what the other... Uh, changes are, and that's what I was kind of wanted to hear. 
Oh, well, we had the opportunity to reduce some of the concrete um, criteria things that he brought to us, and, and I feel confident in my vote the way it was. Um, that's, you know. And if it's okay with the board, I'm going to do you mind if I ask the gentleman for the quick 30 second cliff notes? Okay, sure. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, please reintroduce yourself as well, please. Yeah. What? Oh, sorry. I'm Chris Adams, owner of the uh, 212 North Edgeworth home. Um, the uh, home in question. Um, I would just like to start by saying I did not fully understand the process the last time or um, exactly how the variances were given or the uh, requests to reduce. I thought that if you said no, I could simply then repropose with the reductions. I did not understand that a no meant I had to go through this whole process again. So I do apologize for that. It was a misunderstanding on my part. Um, Having said that, the uh, proposals are that um, I, I discussed um, with uh, a couple of people, and um, the, uh, the new proposal, instead of having the, like, nine variances, would have, um, I, I believe it's just two. I will have to make the official drawings and um, have Mr. Murphy go through them to state for sure. But the um, variances were before were, like, width of the driveway and overall coverage and um, some other things because the way I had the stairs set. Turning the stairs sideways got rid of three of the variances for the driveway width, etc. cetera. Um, and the garage now, instead of being a uh, 30 by 35 foot garage with an overhang, um, I reduced it to a 26 by 35 garage because that is the standard garage size that I can purchase easily. Um, there is the potential option um, speaking with a the company, there is a potential option to maybe buy a 26 by 30. It is more expensive because it is special. Um, so I was trying to get the um, standard garage from them. I did this time speak with uh, all of the neighbors, um, went around and talked to them, showed them what I have. And um, it was, th what I sent out the first time was uh, this. I'll let you pass that around. It's a 3D view, a front view, and then a uh, top view down of, um, of what my proposal is. Um, I also went around and talked to all the neighbors and um, had them actually, and that's what was sent out last night late. Um, I went out and had them all uh, actually sign the sheet here. Oh, oh that's just the agenda, you know, that one. Um, but I had them all sign the sheet saying that um, they actually, I had talked to them. They like my idea, and um, they all said that um, they're in support of at least reconsidering it so that they can uh, see the full, my full new plan with all of the specific laid out um, uh, dimensions, et cetera. All right, so, well, let me bring, bring it back to this side of the table, but I'm going to ask you one question directly just for yes. point of cl clarification. You are telling me that you're going to take it from the previous nine requests out to two variance requests, and you have effectively eliminated seven. I believe it's two. Okay. Yes, that's my plan. That, I mean, that's, that, that's a pretty significant number. <laughs> Mr. Curtis and Mr. Olfak. I have a question for you. We have a motion on the table whether or not we're going to rehear this. We haven't voted on that motion. We have not. And yet I'm starting to hear this. <laughs> Can we deal with the motion on the table? And, and, well, I would and, think that and, we're going speaking from to the, 11 we're to speaking, 2 or whatever is a significant change. Here's my question. Yeah, well, the administration said that they thought there was not significant change, right? Your question is, can we overrule that? I don't, you know, but I am interested <laughs> to leave it where it was last month in that we heard the case. If it's a new case, then he can do it quickly, right? Doesn't have to wait a year if he has significant changes, right? And that's for administration to figure out. So I guess I'm voicing my, uh, you know, not being in support of the motion to rehear the old oh, which, case. Which is perfectly fine, absolutely. Yeah. So, I'm, well, let me get to Mr. Olfak first. Uh, although, if he actually did go down to two, that sounds significant, but maybe Joseph didn't know all the nuances because he hasn't presented everything to him. That's besides the point. The point is, is I don't like the fact of us ruling, and in this case it was unanimous, um, and then allowing a Pandora's box so that any time someone else says, oh, even though you ruled against me, if I make enough changes, I can come back and maybe weasel my way back onto the thing. We made our decision. We heard it. It's up to the administration now to decide if there's enough significant changes to warrant a new case or 
he can appeal that way. Um, otherwise, I think we're just going to open up the Pandora's box that anyone else, like the fence lady today, can come back. And So I'm not in support of this. I'll Mr. simply Carl. reiterate Anthony's point. The, the concept of whether to consider the reconsideration or not should entirely hinge on whether the petitioner has was unable to provide some type of evidence or something that was important to your decision making a month ago and now that's been brought to your attention and you feel that necessitates bringing them back. That's the real crux of whether you should be considering a reconsideration or not. Well, I think my vote would have been different had I okay. had it been two certainly. variances versus as many as there was. I, it certainly would have been different if there weren't if the whole neighborhood wasn't here. Yes, and I, I think uh, that's Mr. Ofac's point of, of just making sure that, that that we clearly state what the reasons are, so that it can be defended on staff's point of why was this one taken for reconsideration and not that one. We can point back to well, the board said these particular things in determining whether they wanted to bring them back for reconsideration. Mr. Olfak. Thank you, Joseph. You actually put it perfectly. He didn't change, he didn't give any new evidence of what we heard. He changed based upon our decision. Changing off of our decision is not new evidence. Therefore, he needs to go through the process to get it reconsidered. That's why I won't support this. All right, any other comments? All right. I won't be supporting the motion either, but I did want to give you the courtesy and, and frankly, the edification. Um, I wasn't here last month, but I did read the minutes, and I do understand that this motion was de denied unanimously. Hopefully you can get to the point where you make enough changes where staff feels you've made enough changes where you can present this as a new case. But I think, you know, we do have competent staff. I went through the exercise with them not to call out as competence, but just so we could understand the process better. But I think it's good for this board to stand by that decision, so I'll be uh, not uh, in support of this motion. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Gavin. I, I know I uh, uh, seconded, but it, based on the discussion here, I think I get a better understanding of the process myself now, too. So I, I actually will be voting no on the motion. All right. So I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of uh, approving the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. No. Nay. Right. Doesn't look like I won that one, does it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. But thank you, sir. Hopefully we can make this work. We, you know. Yes. I would encourage you to, to package it, go back, and see if we can take a leather look at it. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I do have a question for you. Um, if you have five minutes after this on a different tomorrow, thing, tomorrow. Can, can I? Not oh, you're in the office tomorrow then? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. All right, sure. Thank you, sir. Good luck. All right, so we have nobody left, so there will be no public comment. Motion to go home. <laughs> Support. Support. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.